For the next 1,000 days, I'm going to be transforming into different members of the amazing Digital Circus. Using my variety of awesome powers, I'll overcome unbelievable challenges and face off with otherworldly foes. Will I be able to escape the digital world or will I be abstracted? Watch until the end to find out. On day one, I spawned into the amazing Digital Circus as Kane. All around me were the other circus members. How did, how did we get here? I can't remember either. I've lost my memories. Suddenly, darkness gathered, and the abstracted dragon appeared before us. It was the biggest abstraction I had ever seen. Lousy creatures, I can assure you that you won't forget me once I abstract all of you. The monster released a powerful abstraction beam as his abstracted minions appeared and attacked my friends and me. I knew I had to protect everyone. Run away! The circus members escaped while I tried to hold off the enemies with my cane. I was able to take down a few of them, but there were too many for me to defeat alone. If only I could remember how to use my full power! I vow to make this circus collapse! Get him, minions! I couldn't fight any longer, so I ran for my life while I still had the chance. On day two, I was being chased through the circus by the abstracted entities. I took every path I could, but soon enough, I was cornered. Come on! On Kane, use your awesome powers! Suddenly, I unleashed a firebolt attack that was able to defeat some of the abstracted monsters. That's more like it! With my new ability, I fought off the swarm the best I could, but another abstracted entity snuck up behind me. Look out! Before the monster was able to strike me, Bubble flew in and took him down with his sharp teeth. Bubble, for once I'm glad to see you. We didn't get to talk long before one of the abstracted snuck up on Bubble, causing his body to transform. He was now an abstracted Bubble and turned towards me to attack. I tried to defend myself with my fire blast power, but he was 10 times stronger than any of the other abstracted entities I had been fighting. I couldn't keep up. I've got to get out of here. I looked up and noticed a door floating high above me. I flew into it and tried to escape the abstracted bubble. On day three, I arrived in another room to find a mysterious orb at the center. What's that? It feels familiar. Familiar. By instinct, I flew over and grabbed the orb, causing me to be sent into a flashback. When I came to, I was at the grounds, building the tent with my own two hands. When I'm done with this place, I'll be able to have all kinds of wacky adventures. Eventually, I put the finishing touches on the circus tent, and I stood proudly over my work. It's finished! I think I'll call this the amazing digital circus! I snapped back to reality and remembered some of my past. That's right! I built this place with my own two hands! I need to collect more of these orbs and find out more of my memories! Suddenly, my body transformed. I grew bigger in size and obtained an even more powerful cane. I had five more hearts and the rest of my magician powers. Just then, a Distracted bubble broke into the room. It's dinner time! Oh no you don't! I'm going to make you see the light! I charged, ready to face off against my old pal. On days four through five, I was facing off against my abstracted friend. As I flew around, Bubble summoned abstracted tentacles from the ground to trap me. They even blinded me. I escaped their grasps and summoned meteors down onto my abstracted friend. Take this! I hit him with my fire chain powers and defeated him. He transformed back into his normal body. Uh, being abstracted feels 
awful. Thanks for saving me. Take this. He handed me some food to take with me on my journey. Ooh, pumpkin pie. My third favorite pie. Amazing. The other circus members are in danger, and you're the only one who can help them. Then I better start searching for my friends. I headed to the grounds where I could begin my search. However, I quickly discovered that Pomni was stuck on a roller coaster. Help! Oh no! My newest pal! Hang in there! After this long-winded comment, I will surely save you! On days six through seven, I flew towards the roller coaster to find Pomni stuck spinning in circles as she raced around the tracks. I can't leave this cart! Get me out of here! Don't worry! The amazing and handsome Kane is here to save the day! Just save me already! I flew in front of the speeding cart and tried to stop it using my raw strength, but instead it rammed me off the rails and I took damage from the fall. Well, that didn't work. Surely there's an off switch around here. I looked around and discovered a lever surrounded by signs that said off switch. Wow, that's convenient. I flipped the switch, but instead of bringing the cart to a stop, a part of the track exploded. Uh, oops. <laughs> Omni flew off the rails and towards her doom. Uh-oh. I used fast thinking and created a body of water for Pomni to land in. Her cart crashed into the pond, but the water saved her from taking fall damage. Are you okay? <gasps> No, I almost died multiple times. I'm not okay. What is this place anyway? Oh, I just learned this one. I built this place. It's called the Amazing Digital Circus. Wait, how can you just learn about a place that you built? Uh, hey, look, a distraction. <laughs> As if on cue, abstracted entities came running towards us. Ah, I just want to leave. Pomni and I ran for our lives. I can try something. I focused and used my powers to create an exit door in front of us. Finally, I'm out of here. Pomni, wait! She ignored me and walked through the door, only to end up falling straight into the void. I hurried after her so she wouldn't get hurt. On days 10 through 12, I followed Pomni into the void to find that she was okay for now. What is this place? Doesn't matter. We have to get out of here. The void is dangerous! Suddenly, the abstracted dragon appeared before us. Trying to leave so soon? The fun has only just begun! The dragon unleashed his beam attack onto Omni, causing her to abstract into a horrible monster. <laughs> Have fun fighting your friends! The abstracted dragon vanished, and Pomni attacked me. She used her new void powers on me, firing a quick barrage that gave me a withering effect. It was a battle of the magicians. I tried to fend her off with my own arcane attacks, but she was too powerful for me to fight alone. I'm sorry I let you down! Suddenly, Bubble arrived. Don't give up yet! Catch! Bubble threw me a magic scroll upgrade. I grabbed it and gained the ability to use summoning powers. Take this! Armed with my new ability, I started summoning Vexes around me to attack Pomni. Along with the Vexes, I also attacked Pomni with everything I had. She took the hits and returned back to normal. What happened? And... What's this? I noticed that she had a memory orb in her hand. She immediately threw it towards me. I grabbed it and was sent into another flashback. On days 13 through 15, I was in a flashback where I was having a feast with a friendly dragon. Dig in, Draco! Don't mind if I do. We started munching on the food and we both enjoyed our time together. You're my best friend. Let's keep having fun together in the tent. Of course, buddy old pal. I return to reality with even more questions than before. Draco, who's that? I need to find the rest of my memories. I used my power 
forced to escape the void with Pomni and Bubble. We returned to the tent and regrouped. Thanks for saving me again. Sorry for being so reckless. I just want to go home. It's okay. I'll do my best to keep all of the circus members safe. Suddenly, I heard the sound of music coming from down the hall. I wasn't sure why, but I had a bad feeling about it. I better check that out. I left Pomni behind with Bubble and went to investigate the source of the music. On days 16 to 18, I arrived at the source of the music at the stage. There was an abstracted entity playing music for a crowd of mannequins while Jax was trapped in a cage behind him. Oh no, they have Jax! I need to save him! I tried to sneak my way through the audience, but suddenly I was hit by a spotlight and I was instantly seen. Ah, it looks like someone has come for the show. Unfortunately, you don't have tickets. I flew towards him trying to end the fight fast, but he began to attack me with his magical music spells. With the help of his cursed song, the conductor summoned glitched fish to rush at me. I did my best to avoid them and rushed for his main body, aiming every attack I did at him. The other creatures were a nuisance though, causing my main attacks to not be as effective. I needed help. I can summon things too. With a twirl of my staff, I called for spirits to swarm around me and fight off his horde of summons while I went for his main body. As we fought one another, our battle spilled out into the crowd. Many of the mannequins were set ablaze. I have to strike him at the source or he'll never stop. I I dodged and weaved closer and closer towards the abstracted conductor. Finally, I made it within striking distance and hit him with my meteor attack. Instantly, he died with one last bow before sinking into the floor. I quickly went over to break Jax out of his prison. Are you okay? Music. <laughs> Follow the music. You were always an odd one, Jax, but this is strange even for you. Music. Closer. Suddenly, he had Extracted into a monster. The music had possessed him. On days 19 to 22, I was under attack by the abstracted Jax. He led with a bunch of slashes and what seemed to be dark needles that dug into me, damaging me greatly. In defense, I struck back with my fire bolts and chains, but he easily shrugged them off. As we fought, he began to fire off black holes of pure darkness. One of the attacks hit the crowd, killing some mannequins. I couldn't let the crowd get swept away in the mayhem. I made a run for it, leading him off the stage and into a wider area. All the meanwhile, he continued to send needles and slashes into my direction. I tried to use my magic meteor attack to snap him out of it, but nothing seemed to work. Jax, stop! It's me, your friend Kane! Music! He hit me with an abstracted black hole, severely hurting me. I couldn't get through to him. This is bad. It would be nice to have some help right now. Just as Jax was about to strike me again, Ragatha appeared. Leave him alone. She used her thunder punch attack to stun Jax in place. I will stay here and keep him stunned. Find the music box and that will return him to normal. I'm on it. Try to stay alive. I flew away in search of the music box in hopes to get Jax to snap out of it. On days 23 to 26, I arrived at a maze, but before I could enter, a magic book stopped me. Hiya, welcome to the mighty maze. If you're able to pass through, you'll get the amazing music box. Did you say music box? Sign me right up, mysterious talking book. I tried to fly over the maze, but the book shot me down with a powerful lightning attack. No cheating! I guess I have to do this the old-fashioned way. I went through the maze in search of the exit. As I walked, the hallways twisted and turned turned in every direction, quickly becoming disorienting. I turned the corner and saw some sheep having a dance party. That's interesting. Next, I spotted a skeleton watching TV. Do you mind? This place is weird. I turned the corner and found a yard with a house at the end of it. Suddenly, an angry minotaur came running from behind the house. Get off my lawn! Ah! 
I was being chased by the ferocious Minotaur until I finally reached the exit. I had won. I beat the maze. The book from before appeared in front of me. Congratulations. Here's your prize. He handed me the music box and suddenly I heard Ragatha scream. Ah! I hurried to make sure she was okay. On days 27 to 30, I arrived back to Ragatha where I saw Jax was now resistant to the lightning punch. He was closing in on her. Get away from her! I placed the music box and turned it on near Jax, letting the music capture his attention. It caused him to stop and transform back to normal. Well, hey, thanks for saving me. I don't know much to give you except this weird orb I found. Everyone loves orbs. He handed me another memory orb. I grabbed it and got transported into another flashback. There, I was standing with Draco watching. All right, buddy, I have a little surprise for you. Suddenly, Jax, Ragatha, Gangle, Kinger, and Zubal appeared on stage. I've brought new friends to play with us. New friends? But this place is supposed to be for us two. But I need to be alone. He stormed off, and I woke up back in reality. I brought the others here to have more company, but Draco didn't seem to like that. Suddenly, I transformed into my third form. I gained five hearts and now could telekinetically control my staffs to deal massive damage. Each memory makes me stronger. I better keep learning more about my past. Just then, the floor opened under Ragatha and she fell into a pit. I hurried after her. On days 31 to 34, I followed Ragatha down into the darkness below to find myself in the cellar. I've got a bad feeling about this place. Suddenly, abstracted entities jumped down all around us, ready to attack. Yep, I was right. I used my new telekinetic staff attacks to fight them off. Thanks to my upgrade, I was able to take them down quickly. I'm much stronger than before, but I have to hurry. Who knows what's down here? I searched around until I saw Ragatha, but when I approached her, she turned around, and I realized I was already too late. Join us, Kane. Suddenly, she fully abstracted into a monster. I was forced to flee and lock Ragatha into the cellar. I need to find a way to cure her. Suddenly, I saw a gloink hopping by and decided to follow it. On days 35 through 38, I followed the gloinks to their nest where I saw them gathering materials into a large pile. Something useful has to be there. I was about to go towards it when the gloink queen emerged. Oh, okay. She she looks like bad news. I better stay hidden. I snuck around the gloink nest, hiding behind rubble to stay covered. Finally, I made it to the pile and began to search it. I've got something. I pulled it out and realized I had Zubal's head. <laughs> the gloink queen heard our screams and turned towards me. Who dares to trespass on my nest? On days 39 to 42, the gloink queen confronted me and Zubal. You have no right to be digging through my pile of treasures. Please, I just need to help my friend here. You know what friends are, right? Nonsense. You'll pay for this. She attacked me and Zubal. I dodged out of the way, but she ended up eating Zubal whole. Zubal! I attacked the Gloink Queen with my new telekinetic staff hours. She fought back, releasing mighty roars that ripped through the air. But I was not going to let her get away with what she did to my friend. I used my fire powers, blasting them and the surrounding area before unleashing my vicious chain attacks. She wouldn't go down, firing deadly lasers that hurt a lot. I used my spinning telekinetic staff attack once more to defeat her. She dropped Zubal's head upon her death. Whoa, that was nasty. Here, take this potion. This is just what I needed to save Ragatha. Time for a rescue mission. On days 43 through 46, I returned to the cellar where I found Ragatha waiting. Oh, you came back. Join, Join us, Kane. Join you? I'm flattered. But no, I'm bringing you back. Ragatha began running at me with the intent to kill. Quickly, I twirled my staff and summoned many vexes that came to my aid. Ragatha fired a purple beam of energy that exploded everything it came into contact with. I used my strongest meteors on her, hoping to stun her, and it worked. I took the opportunity to throw 
throw the potion at her. Reeling from my attacks and the potion, Ragatha began to transform back to normal. Oh, my head. Sorry, Ragatha, but I didn't really have a choice. It's okay. Thanks for saving me. Oh, yeah, I found this strange orb. I feel like it might help you. Ragatha tossed the orb to me, and as soon as I caught it, I was transported into another flashback. I took in my surroundings and realized I was back in the tent. Draco came running up to me suddenly. Kane, come quick. I found something. I followed close behind Draco, and he led me to an exit door. Huh, that's odd. This place isn't supposed to have any exits. Cautiously, I walked through the doorway, only to find myself in the void. What is this place? This is the void. We must never venture out here. But... No buts! Let's get out of here! We turned back through the door and returned to reality back inside of the tent. The void has always been such a dangerous place. Draco seemed pretty curious about it though. Did he do something reckless? I found myself back in the cellar as I gained five more hearts and unlocked my lightning magic. I did not have a lot of time to get settled though as a group of abstracted began charging towards us out of the dark. Reacting quickly, I teleported us back to safety. For the days of 47 to 50, Ragatha and I appeared back in the tent, where Zubal was already waiting for us. Ah, it worked. Welcome back. Thanks, but the others are still in danger. We need to find them. I think I know where Kanger is, but I can't remember without the rest of my body. Do you think you can find the rest of my parts? Leave it to me, Zubal! I set off and began exploring the tent in search of Zubal's lost body parts. After a little bit of looking, I managed to locate one of them at the top of the trapeze act. Nice. Good thing I can fly. I quickly grabbed them. Next, I went out and tried to check the outside of the tent. I spotted the arms on a carousel at the island's amusement park. Well, now this might come in handy. Two for one, I guess. Before I left, I also noticed a strange glowing sticker and grabbed it. I better take this too. Afterwards, I continued searching outside, finally seeing the last part laying on the ground. But before I was able to grab it, an abstracted boar ran by and gobbled it up. Hey, that's not yours. The abstracted boar turned its attention to me and began running straight my way. On days 51 through 54, I was fighting an abstracted boar, hoping to get Zubal's part back. As the abstracted boar approached, it blasted me with a shadow ball attack that teleported me close to him. I attacked back, using my staff to my advantage. Its brute strength was almost overwhelming. I needed assistance. I twirled my staff and summoned my companion Vexes. They took some of the blows for me and attacked the boar. He slashed at them with his shadow tusks, breaking the ground with his massive hooves while he was at it. Then, with a shadow vortex, he managed to take some of them down. I used the moment to call forth my chains. They dug into him and exploded. He was finally weak. I took the opportunity and killed him with my telekinetic spinning staff. As the abstracted died, Zubal's part fell from its mouth. But it was strange and abstracted now. Eh, it's probably fine. Five minute rule. I grabbed Zubal's last piece and began making my way back to the tent. I turned to Zubal quickly, tossing the missing pieces their way. Here you go, buddy. Thanks. Zubal absorbed the missing pieces, but something seemed wrong. Hey, I... Uh... That's weird. I don't feel so good. Suddenly, Zubal transformed into an abstracted monster. Kane. Uh-oh, that abstracted body part must have infected them. Abstracted Zubal lashed out, the transformation having taken them over. On days 55 to 58, I was fending off an abstracted Zubal. They shot a barrage of abstraction bolts at me, causing some serious harm. I fought back with my lightning powers, but it didn't even register the hits. Give in to the abstraction, Kane. Join us. They rained down abstraction bolts all around me. I was in some serious trouble and needed to think of something quick. 
Desperately, I suddenly remembered the glowing sticker I found on the carousel. Well, it's not like I have anything to lose. I used the glowing sticker on the abstracted Zubal, and much to my surprise, they transformed back to normal. Whoa, that was weird. Oh, what's this doing here? Zubal tossed me another memory orb. Oh, wow, another orb. Again, I found myself in a vision. I began searching around the tent frantically. Drake! Go! Where are you? I spotted another exit door, and it was open. Oh no! Did he go into that void? I specifically told him we don't go there. I'll have to go save him now. I ran through the exit door, but instead of ending up in the void, I realized I was back in reality, having snapped out of the vision. That's right. I remember now. Draco went into the void. I need to find out what happened to him. I used my magic to transport myself into the void, hoping to finally get to the bottom of this. For days 59 to 62, I finally arrived in the void, finding nothing except for a single door adrift in the nothingness. Well, that sure wasn't there before. I made my way through the door, ending up on the inside of a castle. Looking around, I spotted Kinger hiding. Ah! Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's just me, buddy. What's wrong. The enemy forces are closing in on my castle, and my army is nowhere to be seen. Ah! I was trying to calm Kinger down when the castle wall behind us exploded, and an army of shadow knights began to flood into the castle. Capture this place, man. Leave nothing behind. I began fighting off the shadow knights, but there were just too many of them. I needed backup, and fast. Otherwise, we were going to get overrun. Run while you still can, Kane. Fight my army, then come back and save me! I knew Kinger was right. I was forced to flee, but promised to search for his men and return to save him. For the days of 63 through 66, I was searching the area for Kinger's missing army. After a bit of searching, I found them in a shooting range. What the? What are you guys doing out here? Your castle is under attack. Your king needs you. Kinger, Psh, who cares? What? That's no way to talk about your leader. And who are you again? Why should we even listen to you? I bet you couldn't even beat us in our own target game. Oh yeah? I'll show you. Challenge accepted. Eager to prove them wrong, I lined up along the target range, facing off against one of the other enemy members. All right, listen up. Whoever gets the most bullseyes win. Got it? Okay, ready, go. I watched in amazement as the army member went first, landing three perfect shots in a row. <laughs> Beat that, punk. I took a second to line myself up with my target, took a deep breath, and then used my fireball, completely destroying the target altogether. No way. Well, I'll be. Listen, we're sorry for doubting you. That's right you are. Now you better listen to me. Otherwise, you'll end up like that target back there. You better go save Kinger right now. Y yes, sir. Men, let's go. Double time. Having proven myself, I began my return to the castle to save Kinger with my new allies. On days 67 through 70, we arrived back at the castle. It was absolutely infested with enemy forces. All right, men, this is it. Let's reclaim this castle. Ready? Charge! I led the attack on the castle, eager to save Kinger and take back what was ours. We continued to fight our way through the halls. Finally reaching the throne room. Unfortunately, Kinger was captured, trapped inside of a cage. The enemy leader was waiting for us. Well, well, well. Looks like your pathetic army has arrived after all. <laughs> no matter. You can't stop me. Without warning, the leader attacked, roaring in a rage and swinging his war axe wildly. I fought back, countering with my own attacks, calling forth my chains and landing a substantial blow. 
Ha! Not too bad for a floating loudmouth, that is. Enough playing around, though. I'm gonna punch your teeth in. The red leader screeched again, empowering himself before he swung, twirling in the air and bringing his axe down with crushing force. I was able to dodge out of the way just in time. I don't think so, pal. I swooped in behind him and landed a major hit with my lightning powers, knocking the red leader out. Having made short work of the enemy forces, I made my way over to Free Kinger. What took so long? I mean, thanks for saving me. Sorry. That was really scary. The wall behind us suddenly exploded, raining down all over the floor. I looked up to see the abstracted dragon looming over us. Ah, but the fun has only just begun. At last, you will have a taste of your own medicine. The abstracted dragon shot Kinger with a corrupted attack, causing him to become an abstracted. On days 71 through 74, I was under attack by an abstracted Kinger, while the abstracted dragon watched on from above us. Kinger, snap out of it! Kinger lunged forward and attacked me with void bombs, blowing up the throne room in the process. Ugh, it's no use. Sorry, Kinger. With no other choice, I retaliated, using my meteors and staves in an attempt to knock some sense into him. He attacked back relentlessly with his void tentacles and bites. Come on, Kinger, snap out of it. I don't want to hurt you. Kinger launched another attack attack, but I was able to dodge it. That's it, men, charge! Hearing my order, my army of allies came rushing in to aid my fit. Overwhelming Kinger, we were finally able to get him to break free from the abstracted dragon's control. What? No! Impossible! Ugh. You will all suffer for this! I'll make sure of it! What's your problem? Why do you hate us so much? <laughs> I guess it's time for you to finally remember everything. The abstracted dragon threw down another memory orb, landing right on top of me. In an instant, I was caught in another flashback. I was disoriented, making my way through the void, searching for Draco. I finally found him, standing alone in the nothingness. Draco, what are you doing here? I was very clear. We don't go to the void. It's too dangerous here. Kane, you've replaced me. So now I'm going to make all of you pay. Suddenly, he began abstracting right before my eyes, transforming into the abstracted dragon. No, Draco, it can't be. You created this monster, Kane. Die! As Draco blasted me with his abstracted beam, I snapped back to reality, having remembered the horrible truth. No, Draco, you were my friend. It was your jealousy that abstracted you. Please, stop. All of this is a misunderstanding. No, Kane, I'll never listen to you ever again. In a fury, the abstracted dragon swooped down to attack me. On days 75 through 78, I was being attacked by the abstracted dragon. His powers were destroying the castle all around him. I was not going to stand a chance against him. I didn't have any other choice. Everyone, listen! We can't win this! Retreat! We ran as fast as we could, desperate to escape from the abstracted dragon. That's right, Kane. Run while you can. You will soon be abstracted, just like me. After a bit of running, we finally found a safe spot, where Zubal, Ragatha, Jax, and Pomni were already waiting. Guys, listen! I have something to tell you! With a heavy heart, I told them about how I remembered everything, and explained that the abstracted dragon was an old friend of mine, and had been corrupted by evil. There has to be a way to cure him then, just like you did with us. But how can we do that? You saw him, he's too powerful! Gangle wouldn't know how. Well, she knows something at least. We just need to find her. Then there's no time to waste! I took off, leaving the group behind to search for Gangle. It was our only chance at stopping the abstracted dragon. For the days of 79 to 82, I searched all over the circus in search of Gangle. Eventually, I found a room where everything was giant. Whoa, everything is so big! It's like a whole house! 
house in here. Wait, maybe I'm just really tiny. I looked around the giant house, but still saw no sign of my ribbon friend. Gango, are you in here? I know much better places to cry than in here. As I searched the massive kitchen, water started to pour from above me. Soon, giant pillars of water flooded down, sweeping me away in a current. No, I hate baths. When the rapid water ride finally came to an abrupt stop, I realized I had washed up next to a giant gangle. The water falling down was Gangle crying. I flew up to him to see what was going on. Gangle, what's wrong, fella? You're flooding up all the good real estate down there. Oh, I can't. It's just this room made me giant, and now I'm too big to leave. I'm not sure if I'll ever be able to return to normal size again. Oh, don't worry about something like that. I can fix you up, no problem. Not wasting any time, I used my amazing powers to shrink Gangle, but none of my amazing spells worked on her. This might be tougher than I thought. I knew it. I'll be stuck like this forever. We can't give up yet. There has to be a cure around here somewhere. Hang in there while I look around. Gangle continued to cry as I went off to find some sort of cure hiding in the room. On days 83 through 86, I searched high and low for some some sort of cure amongst the massive furniture. Eventually, I found a lone potion on the ground. This looks promising. It's even normal sized. I went to grab the bottle, but before I could react, a little gloink popped up out of nowhere, snatching the potion up first. What the? Hey, get back here. I immediately took off, chasing after the little gloink. But to my surprise, he was much faster than me. All right, no more Mr. Nice Mouth. Take this. I used my fire bolts on the little thief, but it just bounced out of the way. Okay, new plan. As I chased the gloink, I continued to use power after power on it till it bounced itself all the way into a corner. Before it even realized it was trapped, I took the chance to finish the little guy off and claim the potion. Serves you right. Now that I had a cure, I quickly returned to the giant gangle and gave it to her. Oh, thanks, King Bottoms Up. She drank it, but instead of returning to normal, gangle morphed into a giant abstracted monster. The potion was a trap. Now, wait a second. Maybe this doesn't have to turn into a fight. Not listening, Gangle immediately attacked me. On days 87 through 90, I was under attack by the abstracted Gangle. She used a void beam on me, but I was able to dodge it, retaliating with my own firebolts. Gangle, snap out of it. It's me, Kane. It didn't seem like my words were even registering as Gangle continued the battle, unleashing a starfall attack. This isn't good. I can't keep this up. I need to think of something fast. My eyes darted around the room as I continued to dodge Gangle's onslaught. I summoned my vexes and they swarmed in to attack the abstraction. In the next moment, I spotted another magic scroll. I quickly grabbed the scroll and as I did, I gained five more hearts and unlocked my magic ice power. Hours. Looks like it's gonna be a bit chilly today. I attacked Gangle once more, now cutting into them with razor sharp icicles before finally she was defeated and transformed back to normal. Oh, I'm normal again. Oh, th thank you, Gain. No problem, Gangle. I'm just happy you're okay. I need your help though. I took a second to catch my breath and explain the situation and that I needed a cure for the abstracted dragon. I see here. I've found this map. Maybe it'll help you find the cure. Thanks, Gangle. I'll take any lead I can. I took the map and made my way along its course in hopes that I'd find the cure I needed. On days 91 through 93, I followed the map, which led me to an empty room. Here it is. Wait, this can't be right. Where's the cure? <laughs> you fool. You actually fell for it. 
The abstracted dragon appeared right before me. Draco, listen to me. I know you're in there somewhere. You have to stop all this. No, Kane. Draco has been lost for a long time now. No, I don't believe it. I know you're still in there. I'm going to find a cure, Draco. I'm going to fix this. Draco is no more. I am the abstracted dragon now. And soon, you will be abstracted too. The abstracted dragon blasted me with a void beam. It was too much for me to bear, and I felt myself fading. I will fight until the very end. Suddenly, everything went dark. For the days of 94 to 96, I came to in a strange realm. Oh, my head. Where am I? You're inside of a dream, Bronzo. Standing before me was an abstracted version of myself. What the? I don't understand. It's okay, Bronzo. Give in to the darkness. You know you want to. What? No, I just want all my friends to be happy, including Draco. How noble of you, but also foolish. Your journey ends here, Bronzo. The abstracted version of myself attacked using a volley of violet void energy. Desperately, I fought back using my arcane powers, shooting lightning and fire, but we seemed evenly matched. Give up, Bronzo. You can't win. You you won't beat me! I'll show you how strong I really am! Remembering my friends, and especially Draco, I rallied myself and used my new meteors, blasting the abstracted Bronzo. No! As he died, I appeared back inside of the tent. The cure was now in my inventory. I did it! I got the cure! Time to gather everyone and make our final plan of attack. With renewed hope, I made my way back to my friends. On days 97 and 98, I had almost made my way back to my friends with a cure for Draco, when Ragatha ran up to me in a panic. Bronzo! Ragatha, I was just heading back to you guys. What's wrong? I think you're gonna need to see this for yourself. Ragatha led me back to where my friends were waiting. The ground and everything around was turning black. Everything was becoming abstracted. Oh no, the abstracted dragon is getting stronger. We need to hurry. We have to stop him before it's too late. You're right, we do. And that's why we all got together to give you this. She handed me a golden talisman, which shot beams of light energy. This should make you strong enough to resist any darkness the abstracted dragon throws your way. Thanks, Ragatha. Agatha, this will. Suddenly, the ground began to shake as a giant hole opened up in front of us. Abstracted entities began swarming out of the hole. This is it, everyone. It's time to fight. Prepare yourselves. On day 99, we were all fighting off the army of abstracted entities. They swarmed me as I fought with my magic powers. I had grown so much over my journey that their attacks did little damage to me, and I had my friends to back me up as I fought. Nice try. Take this! I used my powers to make quick work of the horde. As I thinned out the enemy numbers, a giant abstracted entity stepped forward to attack. Bronzo, listen. We'll take care of these little pipsqueaks. You just focus on the big guy, all right? Sounds like a plan to me. As my friends fought the remaining stragglers, I turned my attention to the large beast in front of me. All right. Looks like it's just you and me. The giant abstracted charged forward. It was heavy, and I shot back using all of my magical powers. It was a tough fight. We traded blows with each other over and over until I finally was able to defeat Defeat it with one final electric blow. Your forces are defeated. Do you hear me, Draco? Come on, come face me one on one. Without any warning, a portal appeared right above me and sucked me inside. On day 100, I appeared back in the void where the abstracted dragon was waiting for me. Give up your little resistance. This ends here. Never! Not until I get my friend back! Your friend is dead! And soon, you will be too! 
He used his abstraction blast, but thanks to the buff my friends gave me, I hung on, retaliating with my own beams of light against the darkness. I used my telekinetic staff powers in hopes to bring Draco down, but he was still too strong. I released a blast of my cold power, but it didn't even affect him. Quickly, I summoned my wisps to help me out, distracting and taking some of the hits. But he was too powerful, and they fell quickly. We began shooting beams at each other in a desperate bid to get the upper hand, and I was struck by his powerful abstraction bolts. It doesn't have to be like this! Yes, it does! You must pay for this pain you caused me! The abstracted dragon used another abstraction black hole attack, but luckily, I dodged it. He was left completely open. No! I'm bringing my friend back! I threw the cure at him. Ah! He transformed back into Draco. My friend was saved. Just as I was about to celebrate Draco's freedom, I felt my memories become distorted. An overwhelming sense of nervousness came over me as my consciousness slipped away into another body. On day one, I spawned into the amazing digital circus, surrounded by the other circus members. Where am I? Who am I? I can't remember anything. Suddenly, a strange man with a a mouth for a head appeared in front of us. Welcome to the amazing digital circus. My name is Kane, and you, my friend, will be known as Omni. Before I was able to ask any more questions, a massive abstracted being appeared before me and all of my new friends. Your time for fun and games is over. I, the abstraction, We'll abstract all of you and make the tent join the void. Wait, no! This isn't supposed to be happening! The abstraction released his minions into the tent, and they began to attack everyone! All the strange inhabitants of the circus began to run for their lives, scattering in different directions. One of the abstracted monsters jumped at me, but Kane was able to protect me with a big toothy bite attack. Omni, I'll hold this guy off! Find your staff and hat. They will give you your magic powers. Pothmo knows where they are. I knew I didn't stand a chance against the abstracted monsters, so I ran for my life. On day two, I was being chased through the tent by the abstracted monsters with nothing to defend myself with. I looked around me and was able to find a staff on the ground. I picked it up but didn't gain any powers. Aw oh man, I guess I have to try and fight back the old fashioned way. The abstracted monsters caught up to me and I began to use my weapon to keep them away. It turns out that inside of the digital circus, I was a skilled fighter. I swung my staff with precision, knocking the monsters back. Unfortunately, I did not have enough strength to fight the monsters alone. I need to find help! I continued running until I finally found a door labeled the name Kofmo. This is the circus member Kane wanted me to find. I opened the door, but instead of Kofmo, I was met with another abstracted being inside. Kofmo had turned into one of the monsters. The abstracted Kofmo hit me with a glitch slash attack, causing my arm to become glitched. I wasn't able to hold my weapon anymore. What happened? What should I do? The abstract monsters were closing in, and I thought I was done for. Suddenly, a little bubble appeared out of nowhere and used his jaws to bite away a clear path. Over here, newbie! I took my chance to follow the bubble before it was too late. On day three, Bubble took me into another part of the tent. Oh man, now I'll never find my magic hat and staff. Don't worry, Pomni. I actually found them on my way to save you. Bubble took me around the corner to reveal my hat and staff waiting for me on a golden platform. I didn't hesitate and picked up the objects. Suddenly, I grew bigger in size and even more powerful. I now had five more hearts and I gained magical powers. Whoa! It worked! Those were some of the Ringmaster's artifacts. Now you shouldn't glitch every time an abstracted monster touches you. Just then, a bunch of strange creatures dropped down out of nowhere and started jumping towards us. Oh no. The Glinks are here! Run! 
Yeah. Bubble tried to run away, but the Gloinks grabbed him and carried him off. Hey, drop my friend! I tried out my new powers on the Gloink. I was now more magical than ever. Bolts of arcane lightning rained down on the Gloinks. Magical chains then sprouted from the ground. And as I swiped, I found I had shimmering slashes. I was taking care of the Gloinks quickly, but more continued to fall around me. I didn't have time to waste on them. So I followed after the bubble nappers to save my new friend. On days four through five, I followed the Gloinks into their nest, where they tossed Bubble into a pile of random stuff. I rushed to his side to make sure he wasn't hurt. Are you okay? I think you have bigger problems, intruder. I turned around and found myself face to face with a horrible serpent-like monster. I am the Gloink Queen. What form of non-Gloinkian mass dares enter my nest? I will turn you into Gloinks. The Gloink Queen snapped at me with her jaws, but I was able to jump away from the attack. Get away from me! Using my new wand, I sent a flurry of psychic slashes and chain attacks to keep the serpent at bay. My powers were strong, but I could tell she was getting frustrated. Stop resisting me! The Gloink Queen used her Gloink War Power to try and throw me off guard, and I fought back with my Psychic Lightning Powers, attacking the Queen for massive damage. Just when I didn't think things could get any worse, an abstracted being fell from the ceiling onto the Gloink Queen. The two of them fused together and caused her to transform into an abstracted Gloink Queen. That's not good. The monster turned her attention towards me, and I ran for my life! On days six through seven, I was being chased through the nest by the abstracted Gloink Queen. I ran around a corner and took cover behind a pile of junk as the Gloink Queen tried to sniff me out. Suddenly, I realized I was sitting next to one of my fellow circus members, Jax. Ah, newbie, you're actually alive. I may not be much longer, not while that thing is looking for me. This nest isn't very stable. Maybe you can use that to your advantage. I knew Jax was on to something. So I looked around the nest and realized there was a weak point in the ceiling. It's risky, but I have to go for it. I jumped out of my hiding spot and at just the right moment, I used my new wand to blast an attack at the ceiling. Rubble fell down onto the Gloink Queen, slowing her down and giving Jax and me a chance to escape. Now, run! Together, the two of us ran out of the nest while the Gloink Queen struggled beneath my trap. On days eight, Eight through nine, I narrowly escaped the Gloink Nest and found a place to take cover with Jax. The circus has been more dangerous than usual. You need to find Ragatha before it gets worse. Where can I find her? She was last seen at the grounds. I would check there. I left Jax and headed to the grounds to see if I could find any clues. When I arrived, I found myself at a carnival where Ragatha was trapped inside one of the prize booths. Mommy, get me out of here. I I ran towards her, but was soon stopped by a mini version of Kane, who appeared out of thin air. Whoa there! If you want one of my prizes, you have to win my game! Wait, Kane? Nope! I'm Mini Kane! Don't tell Big Me I escaped! Now let's begin! The Mini Kane casted magic on us, causing us to disappear into thin air. On days 10 through 12, I reappeared at a carnival game where a bunch of targets were set up in front of me. I now had a bow and three arrows in my inventory. Hit the targets! If all three shots are a bullseye, you win! Looks like I don't have a choice. Time to win this game. I readied my first shot and fired, landing a bullseye on the first try. I went for it again and managed to shoot another bullseye. I've got this! Only one more to go! I sent out my final arrow, but before it could hit the bullseye, the target teleported to another spot, causing me to miss my shot. What? That's cheating! Sorry, no refunds! I walked over to give that scammer a piece of my mind when an abstracted minion burst into the area and ran towards me. I wasn't able to stop it from running into Mini Kane and fusing with them. Oh no, I had such a short life. The Mini Kane transformed into a much larger abstracted entity. 
That's not good. The monster lunged at me and I prepared for battle. On days 13 through 15, I was fighting the abstracted mini cane. It charged and used its abstracted blast ability on me, dealing loads of damage. I readied my wand and used my magic slash attack on it back. It released an even larger abstracted black hole, bringing me down to low health. I can't win this. I need to get out of here. I took my chance to run back towards the main grounds, where I saw Jax looking for me. Just then, the abstracted monster burst out of the trees. It was still hot on my trail. Stand back. I've got this. Jax stepped in between me and the beast and used his swift strike power to distract it. While I was busy with Jax, I reunited with Ragatha and freed her from her prize booth prison. Thank you. Take this, it'll help you defeat that monster. Ragatha handed me a frost staff and I quickly ran back into battle to help my friend. Stand back. I used my frost staff to summon icicles from the sky on the abstracted entity, causing the monster to freeze in place. Is it over? Suddenly, the abstracted mini cane broke through its paralysis and charged towards Ragatha. It hit her with a massive blow, but Jax was able to use his powers to finish off the monster. Ragatha, are you okay? Unfortunately, we were too late. Ragatha's body transformed into a glitchy mess. That's not good. She's coming for us next. Consumed by her glitch, Ragatha ran towards Jax and myself with intent to kill. On day 16, through 18, the glitched Ragatha was coming after us. Now, unable to control herself, she began to attack. She had a thunder punch power that she threw at us and it hurt pretty bad. I did my best to dodge and hold her back with my own magic attacks, but I really did not want to hurt her. Ragatha, it's me, Omni. <laughs> She didn't look like she was going to listen. Instead, she continued to charge at me again. Hang on, I've got an idea. Without hesitation, Jax used his swift slash powers to push Ragatha back into her cage. Now! I sealed the cage with my new ice powers and trapped her away from Jax and myself for now. What should we do? You need to find Kane and Kira before she abstracts. Take this map, I'll watch over her while you're gone. With no other choice, I took Jax's map and hurried onwards. On days 19 through 22, I followed the map until I found myself in a disorienting digital maze. Where would Kane be in here? I wandered around the maze and walked through a lot of strange looking areas. Some were stranger than others. Suddenly, I spotted an exit door. Wait, there's a way out of here? I rushed towards it, but Kane appeared behind me before I could get too far. Omni, what's wrong? Did some Someone start to glitch. Actually, Ragatha has, but, but that's not the point. Why didn't you tell me there was an exit? Exit? <laughs> there aren't any exits here. But there's one right there. I turned around and the exit was gone. I had a strange feeling, but I didn't dwell on it too long. The abstraction had appeared before me again. You got away from me last time, but you're mine now. The abstraction used a black hole attack, but Kane leapt towards me and managed to protect us both. Don't worry about me. I'll hold this guy off. <laughs> Take this list and gather the items on it before Ragatha abstracts. You got it. Without a second to spare, I ran off to collect the items. On days 23 to 26, I was beginning the search for all three items on the list that Kane had given me. A wrench, a slingshot, and a sword? Where am I supposed to find these? Out of the corner of my eye, I spotted the first item at the end of a crazy obstacle course. Oh, that's lucky. Here goes nothing. I jumped from platform to platform over dangerous pits until I climbed up to an extremely extremely tall platform. 
Oh man, I wish I could fly right about now. I jumped onto some bouncy blocks and launched myself up to the end. There, I obtained the first item. As I looked around, I noticed a flashy sign that pointed me towards the next item. This might be easier than I thought. I followed the sign. When I arrived at the next area, I saw the second item sealed behind a glass door with dozens of blocks in front of it. If it's the slingshot you wish to claim, simply spell your name. Hmm, I have an idea. I picked up the blocks and carefully spelled out Pomni. As expected, the door opened and I was able to go in and get the next object. Inside, I spotted a large barrel sitting alone. Maybe that has the final object. As I peeked inside, something pulled me into the barrel and I was drawn into another realm. On days 27 to 30, I fell inside of the barrel world and found myself surrounded by colorful red monkeys. Behind the crowd of monkeys, I saw the final listed item that I needed to save Ragatha. Excuse me, could I borrow that sword? <laughs> no, the sword is ours! Everyone get them! The beast attacked me as a group, using their fists to pummel me. I used my magic attacks and new freezing cold powers to try and get them off of me. But there were dozens of monkeys. Suddenly, they all joined together and formed one giant monkey monster. <laughs> monkey crash and tutor! The now massive monkey had enormous strength. He lifted boulders off the ground like it was nothing, then hurled them in my direction. As they hit me, they exploded, hurting me really badly. The monkey even stomped around like an ape, jumping into the air and barreling down with enough force to shake the very ground. I tried to use my powers to slow him down, but he was a force of nature. I have to make a run for it. I ran past the monster and after the sword. Finally, I was able to grab it. Suddenly, all three listed items fused in my inventory, forming into the next ringmaster's artifact. I transformed into my third form, gaining five more hearts and new shaman powers. I can fly now. Time to teach these monkeys a lesson. I used my powers on the giant ape. My lasers were extremely powerful, raining down from above the monkey and dealing lots of damage. Not only that, but they reinforced my health, granting me golden hearts. He tried to put up a fight, stomping and throwing boulders, but I was too much for him. Eventually, with one awesome final meteor strike, I defeated the giant monkey. I better hurry back to Ragatha before it's too late. With my new ability to fly, I flew out of the top of the barrel. On days 31 to 34, I returned to the prize counter to find the entire place in ruin. Omni, she broke out of the cage, help. Suddenly, Ragatha ambushed me with a lightning fist attack. I used my new laser powers on her to try and weaken her down. She continued to fight, but thanks to my new abilities, I was able to hold my ground. I managed to slow her down enough to land a new magical shaman healing spell on her. And in a blink, she returned back to normal. The ringmaster's artifact worked. Oh, my head. I saw a strange room while I was glitching. I think you need to see this. I followed Ragatha while Jack stayed behind to clean things up. <laughs> I'd never do any cleaning. I arrived into a mysterious room covered in paintings on the wall. Wait, I ran into something like this before, but what is this place? I'm not too sure, but I think it's related to the abstraction. Curiously, I touched a painting on the wall and suddenly I got sucked inside of it. Ah! On days 35 to 38, I appeared on the other side of the painting to find myself in a massive void. I felt myself get lost in how big and endless it was. Where am I? Hello? Suddenly, Kane appeared in front of me. My whack watch was right. You're coming with me. Kane grabbed my hand and transported me back inside of the tent. There you go. Never go back there again. It's dangerous. Dangerous? What are you keeping from us? Tell me now. 
Before Kane could answer, the room began to shake. Uh-oh, looks like I gotta run. Suddenly, Kane teleported away, leaving me behind. I'm going to get to the bottom of this, but for now, I better make sure everyone is okay. Next, I began following the shaking. On days 39 to 42, I arrived at the source of the tremors to find Zubal's head being chased by an abstracted Rex. A uh, little help here. One sec, I'm on it. I used my giant laser powers on the abstracted Rex and got their attention. Hey you, stop picking on my friend, you freak. The abstracted Rex ran at me and tried to hit me with the void breath attack. I struck back with my magical slashes and arcane attacks, doing my best to avoid him. In a flurry of movement, he caused tentacles to sprout from the ground that reached up to slam at me. I quickly evaded them with my flying powers and shot a powerful meteor attack back at them. The abstracted Rex fell to my might. Oh, thanks, newbie. Well, you sure are big. And you sure are small. What happened to your body? The abstracted creatures took my body parts and spread them all over the circus. Could you please just be a doll and find them for me? I'll make sure it's worth your while. You've got yourself a deal. On days 43 to 46, I searched the circus. I quickly found Zubal's arms stuck at the end of a fire obstacle course. All right, flying powers, don't let me down now. I flew through the flaming hoops. I made it to the stage, but a fire creature popped out to stop me. Oh there, those arms belong to the great and powerful Flambo. No, they belong to my friend Zubal. Not anymore. Finders keepers, now get off my stage before I make you. The fiery being dashed at me with his twin flame swords and attacked me with his burning hot powers. Flambo was deceptively quick and with alarming speed slashed his weapons at me, managing to wound me. Then he launched a flurry of embers at me, hitting me square on. I was shocked by how much damage his flames dealt to me. I retaliated with my own arcane powers, but they didn't appear to bother him too much. I'm going to have to find a plan B. On the wall, I noticed the same strange painting that sucked me into the void. Hey, hothead, over here. I taunted him, causing him to dash at me in a rage. As he charged into attack, I nimbly dodged out of the way, causing him to be swallowed into the painting and be sent to the void. Wait, where am I? No, Flambo! Sorry, buddy, I have to help my friends. Just like that, I claimed Zubal's arms and continued my search. On days 47 to 50, I arrived at the next area, only to find Zubal's legs waiting inside. There they are. That was easy. I went towards them, but suddenly a tiger jumped out and swallowed the legs whole. Hey, spit that out. I tried to use my magic attacks on the tiger, but it refused to listen to me. Suddenly, I spotted a nearby pond full of fish, and I got a brilliant idea. I grabbed some salmon from the pond and showed it off to the tiger. Do you want this big guy? Come and get it. Then drop it! The tiger spat out Zubal's legs, and I tossed them the salmon, which they happily munched on. I went on to claim my prize. Only one more body part to go. Out of nowhere, the tiger began acting weird and abstracted into a beast. Without another moment, it pounced onto me. On days 51 to 54, I was facing off against the abstracted tiger. The beast used its claws at me, which dealt tons of damage. The beast had some sort of blood ability and shot blood slashes at me with deadly accuracy. They also would fire needles at me, each pin hurting me more and more. I retaliated with my lasers, trying to get rid of this abstracted tiger. That only seemed to make them angrier, and they started firing black holes at me, sucking me in before they would explode. 
Finally, I had enough, and I used my meteor magic attack, and the tiger fell. To my surprise, he dropped Zubal's body as well. That's the last part I need. Suddenly, a little abstracted gloink snatched up the body before I could grab it. Hey, get back here! I chased after the thief, who would jump and run with immense speed. After a bit, I was finally gaining on it when I spotted another exit door in the distance. I knew there was an exit. I hesitated and realized the gloink was getting away. I had to choose between the exit and Zubal's body. I can't let Zubal down. I'll come back to this later. I quickly chased after the gloink. On days 55 through 58, I was chasing the gloink around the circus. Soon, we ran into Chef Bubble, getting dinner set up. Before anyone could react, the little gloink hopped up onto the table, sending food everywhere. As it snapped up some of the digital food, it began to transform into a giant gloink monster. How could you do this? The monster calmly turned to Bubble before popping them with a laser attack. Uh-oh! The gloink monster decided it was my turn to be chased and charged right at me. It used its void barrage attacks to deal tons of damage to me. I flew around to dodge and returned fire with my powerful lasers. It wasn't long before I had taken a bunch of damage. Luckily, I was at dinner. I grabbed up the virtual food around and used it to heal up. All right, round two, big guy. Our deadly aerial duel continued. I leveled more arcane bursts at the monster, hoping to deal more damage. The gloink monster retaliated with more of its own void attacks, including massive explosives, but I was too strong. I hit it with another laser, and I knew the fight was about to be over. As I landed a final massive lightning storm attack, they fell, dropping Zubal's body as they died. Just then, Zubal's head popped out and hopped over to me. Oh, whoa, you finally got all my body parts. Stop wasting time and pull me back together, please. Oh, of course. I quickly handed the parts over to Zubal, who transformed back to their normal self. Ah, uh, much better. Wait, I don't remember this part of my body. I think this is yours. Zubal handed me the next Ringmaster artifact, the Phoenix Ring. I gained five more hearts and the firewall power that I saw Kane use earlier. Thanks. This will definitely help us take down the abstraction. Suddenly, Gangle ran up to us in tears. Mommy, come quick. Kanger is in trouble. All right, lead the way. On days 59 to 62, Gangle led me into a room full of different doors. Huh? That's weird. These weren't here before. Then we'll just have to check out each one until we find Kinger. We began checking each door to see where they led. Some of them led to really weird places, like other dimensions or other bizarre locations. What about this one? I opened one door, and as I went inside, I found some people in a bathtub. Um, excuse me, do you mind? Oh, sorry. I went to continue checking doors, but as I approached the next one, a giant abstracted chicken burst out of it. Gangle, watch out! Looks like we've got company! The abstracted chicken charged straight at me and attacked with powerful lightning strikes. I fought back using my arcane magic, but the abstracted chicken was shrugging off every hit I landed. Then, he began to hit me with abstracted attacks that pulled me in from afar, getting me close so it could strike me. Take this! Gangle used her ribbon wind attacks on the abstracted chicken, finally bringing it down. As it died, it dropped a map. Perfect! This could lead us to Kinger. Go back and let the others know while I look into this. Yeah, you got it! Gangle and I went our separate ways as I set off and continued looking for Kinger. On days 63 through 66, I was following the map, which led me to a massive tunnel. Wow, I didn't know a place like this existed in the digital circus. I continued walking down the tunnel, which seemed like it was going on forever. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't I see that globe before? Am I stuck in a loop? Something is trapping me in here. I turned around and tried 
tried walking back the way I had come in and found a little abstracted goblin conjuring spells. Aha! Hey you, stop that! I tried to attack it with my magic powers, but it dodged and ran off at an incredible speed. I took off trying to follow it through the tunnel, but I just couldn't catch up to it. Okay, that's it. I've had enough of this. I aimed and attacked at the floor and blasted a hole in the path of the abstracted goblin. It was moving too fast and couldn't react in time, falling into the abyss below. With the abstracted goblin gone, the spell broke. The tunnel changed and an exit was revealed. Finally! All right, hang in there, Kinger. I'm coming for you. On days 67 through 70, I exited through the tunnel's door, taking in my surroundings. I saw that I was standing on some train tracks. I followed the train tracks for a bit until I came across Kinger, trapped in a cage, sitting in the middle of the tracks. Oh, hi there. Nice to see you again. A little help here? A train horn sounded in the distance, and the chugging of an engine started to grow louder and louder. Uh-oh, I have to stop that train. I raced towards the train, using my powers to try and slow it down. Nothing seemed to work, though, and it just kept pushing forward, closer and closer to Kinger. Finally, desperate and running out of time, I used my meteor power, which finally managed to stop the train right before it collided with Kinger. Whew, you did it. Thanks a lot. I thought I was a goner for sure. As I hopped off the cage to break Kinger free, the floor opened up under him and he fell down into a hole. No! Quickly, I broke the cage open and flew down the hole after him. On days 71 to 74, I finally arrived at the bottom of the hole, finding myself standing on a giant chessboard. I looked around the room for any signs of Kinger and saw him on the other side of the room, being held captive in a cage by a princess. And sitting next to her was one of the ringmaster's artifacts. Who are you? Me? Well, I'm the princess of this chessboard, but once I marry my sweet kinger here, I'll become the queen. Wow, gee, I'm, well, I'm flattered at all, but I uh, don't really want to marry you. Well, too bad. You're the only king around here, and I have to marry royalty. You can't just force someone to marry you, lady. You're crazy. Lady? How dare you? You will only refer to me as your highness. The princess began to distort and abstracted into a freaky monster. You'll pay for disrespecting your queen. The abstracted queen lunged at me in a fury and I prepared to defend myself. On days 75 through 78, I was locked in combat with the abstracted queen. She used an explosive blast, which hit with a surprising amount of force, causing a lot of damage and destroying parts of the chessboard. I tried to fight back using my lasers, but it didn't even seem to affect her at all. She unleashed a void barrage that left me nowhere to escape and gave me the withering effect. <laughs> Is that all you got? She launched another powerful explosive blast, which knocked me backwards as it landed. I took a second to recollect myself and realized I was standing right next to the ringmaster's artifact. This is my chance! I grabbed the artifact, causing me to gain five more hearts and the starfall power. Checkmate, princess! I used my new starfall power to blast the princess into oblivion. Now that she was dealt with, I rushed back over to Kinger's cage and freed him. Whew, you did it. Thanks a lot. I thought I was a goner for sure. Our celebration was cut short as the sky began to grow dark. Nervously, I looked around when suddenly the abstraction appeared right in front of me. On days 79 to 82, I was standing face to face with the abstraction himself. Well now, you've been making a real mess of things, haven't you? What do you want? I've come to offer you a deal. Stop your resistance against me, and in exchange, I'll give you the exit to this place. 
an exit door appeared in front of me as he finished talking. This was my chance to finally escape the digital circus. I don't have any other choice. I need to take this chance. Fine, you've got yourself a deal. I walked through the door cautiously and found myself standing in a strange office room with another exit door. What the? What is this all about? Confused, I walked through the next exit door only to find myself back in another office room. I rushed through the exit again, but each time the door led right into another office. No! Ah! Let me out of here! I continued to run through the exit doors, returning to the office over and over until I finally found myself in the void. That's when I had the terrible realization. There's really no way out of here, is there? I'm stuck here. The abstraction suddenly materialized in front of me. <laughs> you actually fell from my trap. With nobody here to help you, I could finally banish you to where all of my creatures reside. Have fun in your cellar. I felt myself fading away as I was transported to a new location. On days 83 through 86, I appeared in the cellar, surrounded by abstracted beings. The creatures began closing in on me within seconds of appearing. I attempted to fight them off using all of my powers, but they were much stronger than usual in this realm. No way! Is this the end for me? Just when it seemed hopeless, pain appeared from the darkness and summoned spirits of light to fight off the abstractions. He surrounded us in a protective firewall before turning to me. I think it's time to get you out of here! He teleported us back to the safety of the tent. I'm sorry for taking the abstraction's offer. I thought I was finally going to escape this place, but he tricked me. It's okay. I know all of you were really wanting an exit, but now's not the time to dwell on that. We need to find Gangle. She knows where the final ringmaster's artifact is. Suddenly, we heard the sound of something shattering. I rushed over to investigate, leaving Kane behind. On days 87 to 90, I rushed in to investigate the shattering sound and found Gangle crying over a broken mask. Gangle, I was just looking for you. Listen, I need you to tell me where to find the final Ringmaster's artifact. I, I would love to, but I can't remember. Not without my comedy mask. What if I get it fixed for you? Yeah, that might work. And I've got just the idea. Jack strolled up to us out of nowhere. Come with me, newbie. I think I can help you fix this problem. I followed Jax into another door, leading us to a candy-themed room. There should be something around here somewhere. Jax, I need glue, not a snack. This isn't helping. Frustrated, I continued looking around the room. As I was exploring, one of the candy pieces on the ground began to transform into a monster. It lunged at me, and I braced myself for a fight. On days 91 through 93, I found myself squaring off against the candy monster. It hit me with a sugar breath attack, causing significant damage. Thinking fast, I fought back using my arcane lightning, but we seemed pretty evenly matched. It then leveled some sour jawbreakers at me, following up with a lemony ray of power. Hey Jax, a little help over here? Oh, yeah, right. Jax used his own abilities on the candy monster, knocking them back. Taking advantage, I rushed in and attacked with my meteors, dealing the finishing blow. As the candy monster died, it dropped chewed bubble gum onto the floor. Ew, that's gross. But actually, you know what? I think I might be able to use this. See, I told you everything would work out. We returned back to Gangle, and I used the gum on her mask, fixing it good as new. You fixed my comedy mask. Thank you. Oh, and I remember where the Ringmaster's artifact is now. Gangle quickly scribbled down a map and handed it to me. There you go. Thanks, Gangle. It's time to get the final piece and take down that abstraction. On days 94 to 96, I followed the map to find the final Ringmaster's artifact waiting for me. Hmm, this has to be a trick. Can I just pick it up? I was about to grab it when Kane appeared and snapped 
matched it up first. Hey, what's the big idea? We're on the same side. That we are, Pomni. But I wanted to test you before giving the final artifact up. I wanted to see how much you've learned on your journey. How do you want me to prove myself? In combat! Show me if you have what it takes to surpass me! Kane attacked me with his rapid fire blaze attacks. Fireball after fireball was lobbed at me, and I did my best to dodge out of the way. I used my lasers in retaliation, but it hardly seemed to affect Kane. Not bad! You've really learned a thing or two! With the twirl of his staff, Kane summoned a horde of spirits to aid him in battle. They swarmed me like like bees, obscuring my vision and allowing him to hit me more easily. I called on my arcane magic to rain down ice and lightning, hoping to hit everyone at once. I then focused my attacks on Kane himself, even creating walls of fire to block his path. Kane was tricky though, and managed to use a frosty teleportation power to dodge out of the way of my many attacks. Finally though, I hit him and his minions with a raining star attack, defeating the spirits and bringing Kane to the floor. I had won the battle. Ha ha ha! Very well. You've earned this. He handed me the final artifact, granting me five more hearts and a new power. Let's gather up the others and make our attack plan. On days 97 to 98, I gathered around with the other circus members, ready to discuss the final course of action. I finally gathered all the ringmaster's artifacts. It's time that we struck the abstraction down before he can strike us. What? How are we supposed to do that? He's so powerful. Come on now, crybaby. Don't you have a bit more faith in our team? But Gangle is right. We can't just run in blindly. He has a whole army of abstracted monsters. Huh, <laughs> that's why I've got this prepared. Jax tossed me a map. This will lead you right to the abstraction's base. We can ambush him when he's not expecting it. This is vital information. How long have you had this, Jax? Eh, somewhere between 97 and 98 days. But don't worry about the details. Let's crush this guy. Everyone but Kane left the area. He wanted to talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. You've really united everyone here. I think you deserve this as a token of our thanks. He handed me a hat that granted me five more hearts. This will definitely help win the battle. I won't let the team down. On day 99, we followed Jax's map to find the abstraction's base. It was swarming with abstracted monsters that we needed to take down. All right, let's mess this place up. So the abstraction has to deal with us. Everyone ran in and began to fight the abstracted army. Gangle used her ribbon wind powers that shot out like razors. Jax backed her up with a violet slash attack. Thanks. Eh, don't sweat it. Just then, I saw some of the abstracted beings close in on my friends. Leave them alone! In a powerful blast of my laser powers, I eliminated them. We were making good work when suddenly the abstraction itself arrived. You! You escaped the cellar! I did, and I'm here to stop you once and for all. No! I won't let you! The abstraction charged at me and teleported us both to another location. On day 100, I reappeared in the final area with just me and the abstraction. You should have just stayed in the cellar while you had the chance. Now I'm going to make this long and painful. I'll never submit to a liar like you. You're a monster. Then let's see if you have what it takes to defeat me. Without hesitation, the abstraction began his attack. Armed with the powers of glitch and night, he shot beams of darkness and withering explosions at me. I didn't have a moment to rest as I soldiered through the onslaught, retaliating with my own digital powers. I struck him with arcane bolts, lasers, and even my ice powers. I was slowly whittling away at his health. He used his massive void explosion attack, but I was nimble enough to dodge it. What? Impossible! Don't underestimate me! I used my meteor power on him and dealt the finishing blow. Before I could celebrate, I became lightheaded and realized that there was still more for me to do as I drifted into my next form. On day one, I spawned into the amazing digital circus as Jax. 
the ringmaster Kane had gathered me and the other circus members to show off his latest creation. The exit door is finally finished. Now we can all leave. Without any warning, the glitch spread onto Kane, causing him to abstract into a new terrifying form. This place isn't glitchy enough. He began to unleash his new dark powers, releasing powerful explosions. Abstracted spots started to appear all over the circus. Well, Pomni, it looks like we have a lot on our plate today. Pomni? Pomni? I looked over towards Pomni and realized she, along with my other friends, were running away into different parts of the circus. Oh, great. Well, this is gonna be a pain. Kane, are you still in there? No, it's not abstracted enough. You need to abstract too. Kane gathered his power and summoned an abstracted golem. The massive enemy lunged at me and I ran for my life. On day two, I was being chased through the tent by the abstracted golem. I did everything I could to lose them, but unfortunately, I was soon cornered by the horrible monster. Can you bug somebody else? I tried to fight off the enemy, but I had nothing to defend myself with other than my fists. The creature leapt into the air and stomped down with its full weight, sending shockwaves all around him. Then it spewed glitched particles at me, dealing massive damage. I was fighting a losing battle. Just as I thought I was done for, Ragatha ran into the fray and used her golden beam attacks to distract the abstracted monster. That won't hold them off for long. Come on! The two of us took cover behind something as the beast continued to look for us. Kane has lost his mind and has glitched the entire circus. I need your help to repair it. Seems like you got a pretty good plan. Good luck with that. Ugh, I can't do it myself. I don't know. You can summon golden beams of light. I I think you got this handled. Suddenly, the abstracted monster smashed through our cover, breaking it to pieces. We had been discovered. Hurry, follow me. The two of us ran away as the enemy continued to rampage after us. On day three, Ragatha and I ran down the hall of rooms until finally arriving at her door. We ran inside and shut it behind us before the abstracted monster could catch up. Find something to defend ourselves. I looked around and spotted a mallet on the ground. I picked it up, but to my surprise, my body began to change form. I grew bigger in size and more powerful, giving me five more hearts and awesome combat powers. Whoa, what's this about? Just then, the monster broke down the door and stormed into the room after us. Take this! I readied my mallet and began to smash it into the enemy. It took loads of damage, and after some back and forth, he went down to my incredible new combat powers. This is why I needed your help. You're the only one who can wield that mallet and repair the circus. Suddenly, the room around us began to glitch out. Ragatha and I braced ourselves as the two of us were teleported outside of the tent. When I reappeared, I found myself in the middle of the tiger cage. Ragatha was now inside of the cage, and on top of it was none other than the abstracted cane. Oops. Looks like I was only able to round up one troublemaker. Get him, my kid. Without warning, the tigers in the cage all partially abstracted. Before I could react, they came charging after me, forcing me to run away. On days four through five, I was being chased through the grounds by Kane's abstracted tiger goons. I booked it towards the tent and tried to take cover inside, but the abstracted felines were able to find me. That's it, no more running. I readied my weapon and began to smash the enemies one by one. They tried to fight me back with their claws, but I was able to fend them off until only one remained. Who's the strong one now? Suddenly, the last tiger turned into a giant abstracted beast. It attacked me with a powerful lunge before raining down dangerous acid balls. I quickly realized that it was much more powerful than before. I fought back with my mallet, but the beast refused to back down. It's no use. I have to run. I ran through the tent as the tiger continued to pursue me. I soon spotted a ladder and ran up it to escape. But when I reached the top, I was cornered at a tightrope. The tiger jumped up behind me. I was trapped. I have to risk it and walk across the rope. I began to balance on the tightrope, leaving the abstracted tiger on the platform behind me. He was too big to follow. My plan was working. Ha, some cat you are. You can't catch me now. 
Suddenly, the tiger unleashed a powerful roar attack. I plummeted down towards my doom. On days six through seven, I was falling down towards my certain death. But before I was able to hit the ground, the floor began to glitch out. Water appeared under me, breaking my fall and saving my life. Woo, that was lucky, and I'm not letting it go to waste. I looked around the area and noticed an electrical generator, giving me an idea. I climbed out of the water and used my mallet to smash the electrical generator into pieces. Static spread through the water, turning the floor into an electrical trap. Hey, big guy, come and get me. The abstracted lion took the bait and jumped towards me, causing him to fall right into my trap. The beast was zapped, weakening him greatly. The two of us leapt at each other. The beast clawed at me and spewed noxious abstracted fumes. I dashed through the attack, slamming right through his defenses and dealing a critical blow. Betcha you weren't expecting that. As the beast died, it dropped a map. This could be a lead. I better check it out. With my new clue in hand, I left the area to see where the map would take me. On days eight through nine, I arrived at the location on the map to find where Ragatha was being held captive. Next to her was a massive glitch. Jax, oh, you found me. Quick, repair the glitch before Kane comes back. And how do I do that? Uh, I'm not sure. Just whack it with the mallet. I readied my weapon and smashed it into the abstracted area. But instead of destroying it, I was sucked up inside. I reappeared inside of the void to find nothing around me except for a note. What's this? I picked up the clue and read it. To return Kane back to normal, you must repair the six abstracted glitches scattered across the circus. Do this before day 100, otherwise damage will be permanent. Suddenly, Kane appeared in front of me and snatched the note out of my hands. Kane, you tried to steal my note. You will pay for that. He attacked me with his ultimate power, dealing loads of damage. I knew that I didn't stand a chance, and I looked around before spotting a strange passage through the void. I jumped into it, unsure of where it would take me. On days 10 through 12, I found myself back inside of the tent. I had managed to escape Kane for now. Now, that note must have been a clue. I need to find all six glitches before it's too late. Suddenly, I heard a familiar scream. I ran towards the source of the yelling to find Pomni trying to fight off a swarm of gloinks. Jax, help me take on these guys. Hmm, I guess. You could at least say please. Please! I jumped into battle and began to smash the pesky gloinks with my mallet. They had us outnumbered, but I wasn't about to lose this battle. I crushed gloink after gloink with my mallet, while Pomni used her musical bard powers to back me up. Together, we managed to defeat the swarm of enemies. Thanks, Jax. Don't sweat it. But hey, I didn't know you played music. I didn't know you've been working out. Oh yeah, all the time. Uh, anyway, those gloinks have been spawning nonstop from a glitch that formed nearby. Did you say glitch? Take me there. I followed Pomni to the glitch. But when we arrived, we realized that the gloinks had created a massive nest around it. This is getting ugly fast. I better take care of that glitch before it gets worse. Oh no, you won't. Just then, the Gloink Queen emerged from the glitch and stopped me in my tracks. Without warning, she attacked. On days 13 through 15, I was locked in combat with the Gloink Queen. She used her bite and laser eye attacks on me, and I fought back with my mallet. But she was the toughest foe I had fought so far. Uh, quick, take this. Pomni tossed over a bowling ball. I grabbed it, causing me to gain five hearts and new powers. Armed with my new bowling ball, I fought back the Gloink Queen with everything I had. It was anyone's game, and she still refused to back down. That's it. You're going back from where you came. Using my new weapon, I landed a heavy attack on the Gloink Queen, knocking her back into the glitch. No! The monster died, and the glitch vanished, destroying it once and for all. Only five more glitches remain. Suddenly, the room began to shake around us. With the glitch now gone, the nest was collapsing. Run! Pomni and I ran for our lives as the nest crumbled around us. 
On days 16 to 18, Pomni and I ran as the Gloink nest collapsed around us. I was quick enough and narrowly escaped, but Pomni wasn't. I watched in horror as massive amounts of rubble fell onto her. Don't worry, I'll help you. I hastily dug her out, but Pomni was badly injured. Uh, you need to find something to heal me with before it's too late. Then I better get looking. I made sure to leave her in a hidden spot before I began to explore. As I searched, I came across a buffet table. Well, I was getting hungry. Don't mind if I do. I chowed down on some of the various options and saved some for Pomni to heal with. Out of the blue, Bobble popped up in front of me. No! My feast! You'll pay for this! Oh yeah? How? Like this! Bubble grew giant-sized and in one chunk gobbled me up whole. On days 19 to 22, I was trapped inside of Bubble's stomach. It's like a whole new world in here. I better find a way out. I traveled through the strange dimension, passing oddity after oddity. Huh, all this stuff is from the circus. Is Bubble eating it and that's why it's always changing? Eventually, I came across a trident lodged inside of a stone. Maybe that's the key out of here. Without another thought, I walked up to the trident and pulled it out. That was easier than I expected. Suddenly, the ground began to tremble beneath my feet. Gift gremlins were summoned all around me. I spoke too soon. It was a trap. The gift gremlins used their rip and slashes and box bite attacks on me. And I did my best to fight back using every ability I had at my disposal. Through sheer numbers, they were beginning to overwhelm me. I needed to think of a way out of this fast. Wait a second. I'm inside of Bubble. I just need to pop him, right? I hurled the trident into the air. It traveled far until it hit something. It was the wall of Bubble's stomach. Unable to take the impact, Bubble popped. In the next instant, I reappeared in the real world, safe and sound. That settles that. I better get this food to Pomni before she expires. I hurried toward my friend. On day 23 to 26, I returned to Pomni with the food I'd gathered. Unfortunately, she was under attack by an archer golem. Jax, help! Hey, leave her alone. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? I jumped into the fight, beating the monster away from Pomni. Enraged, it used its magic arrow attacks on me. As I drew closer to the monster, it turned and shot an arrow, which erupted into a pool of poison as it impacted near me. It threw a crazy arrow bomb, which blasted arrows in every direction. It was impossible to dodge. I was a bit tired from the fight earlier, so I had a few close calls. But thankfully, I had more leftover food and was able to heal up. I managed to knock them down to the ground and let loose with a bowling ball barrage, followed up by a mallet combo. Soon enough, the monster was dealt with. Not wasting another second, I delivered the rest of the food straight to Pomni. Thanks for the help, Jax. Don't sweat it. Now that you're safe, though, I should probably try and free Ragatha again. You're right. This might be useful then. The monster dropped it. Pomni tossed me a key. Another key for my collection. Thanks, kid. No time to waste. I set off for Ragatha and that pesky glitch. On days 27 to 30, I arrived back to Ragatha and the glitch I failed to remove. It looked as if the glitch was beginning to consume the entire cage along with Ragatha in it. Jax, oh, you found me again. Oh, thank goodness. I don't want to still be here when that abstracted stuff reaches my cage. Don't be thankful yet. We've still got to get you out of there. As I was about to free Ragatha, an abstracted monstrosity spawned out of the glitch. Uh-oh, looks like we've got company. The abstracted monstrosity charged at me, trying to take me down with a massive fist attack. Nuh-uh, I don't think so. I quickly used my mallet to knock him in the gut a few times. Then I sent an array of heavy bowling balls parailing toward him. The beast was a tank, easily toughing through some of my heaviest attacks. It swung down with his fists and then hurled itself into the air, then coming down with explosive power. Despite my efforts, the abstracted monstrosity refused to back down. With another roar, the monster charged at me again. Luckily, I 
I was able to dodge the attack, causing them to blow up some giant play blocks in the area. The dust settled, and I spotted another mallet sitting on the ground. Now's my chance. I ran for the mallet and picked it up, causing me to transform into a new, even buffer body. I gained five hearts and a giant slam attack. I was also able to launch bowling balls with explosive force now. Reinvigorated, I leapt back into battle and used my newfound powers to defeat the monster. Finally, the glitch vanished, leaving only the normal circus wall behind. Not wasting time, I freed Rakatha from her cage. I knew you were the right person to save the circus. Suddenly, abstracted Kane appeared right in front of the two of us. No, no, no! You are ruining everything! Be gone out of my sight! With a twirl of his staff, he used his powers to teleport me and Ragatha away. On days 31 to 34, I reappeared in a wooded area in the grounds. There, I encountered Gangle, trying to get her comedy mask out of a tree. I can't reach it. It's too high up. All right, enough waterworks. I'll get it. I leaped up the tree, but before I was able to retrieve the mask, the forest began to abstract around me. Suddenly, some of the trees turned into monsters. Get off of our brethren. The trees swung at me with their brambled fists, hitting me with massive punches that nearly knocked the wind out of me. I fought back using my newfound powers, creating explosions that shook everything around us. As I tried to duck and weave through their attacks, the tree monsters used their control of roots to draw me in closer to their attacks. I tore through their grasp and retaliated with my explosive bowling balls. Each of the creatures leapt and slammed at the ground, sending shockwaves through the soil that rattled my bones. Vines then shot out of the earth, attempting to spear me through. I had to evade direct attacks from them, or else I'd be plant food. Soon enough, my determination paid off. One of the trio fell. I was nearly there. As I navigated the crater created from our battle, I pummeled the remaining two with my powers. The next one died, leaving only one remaining. Take this! I used my powerful stomp attack to defeat the tree, but as it died, the comedy mask fell from the shockwaves and shattered. Oops. Oh no, without my comedy mask, I won't be able to remember where the next glitch is. But, but maybe if you find some super glue, we can fix it. I guess that means I know what I need to do next. I set off to look for super glue to fix the mask. On days 35 through 38, I was searching everywhere for the super glue I needed when I stumbled upon a bowling alley in the middle of nowhere. What the? I've never seen this place before. I wonder what's inside. I crept into the bowling alley cautiously, checking the surroundings for super glue. As I approached the counter, I saw the super glue on the wall behind it. I started to make my way behind the counter when a bowling alley employee jumped out and stopped me from grabbing the super glue. Whoa there, buddy. No crossing the counter. Sorry, I just need that super glue. Oh, this here super glue? That's the one. Oh, if you want that super glue, you've got to earn it. Get a strike, and then we'll talk. Are you serious? Ugh, fine. I grabbed my bowling ball and went over to the lane. All right, here goes nothing. I lined myself up and threw the ball, sending it racing down towards the pins. Looking good. Suddenly, the pins vanished right before the ball struck. It sailed through the empty space, only to have the pins reappear after rolling past. What? This is rigged. How is that even fair? Rigged? Nah, looks like a skill issue to me. Sorry, buddy, you lost. Now you gotta pay the price. The bowling alley employee bolted towards me. He drew a curved sword and attacked me viciously. I wasn't about to go down without a fight though, but the employee proved to be stronger than I thought. Before I knew it, I was cornered at the edge of the bowling lane. See you later, sucker. The bowling alley employee let loose with one last flurry of slashes, knocking me down into the darkness below. On days 39 through 42, I was falling, but luckily I landed on a pile 
pile of trash, which broke my fall. Man, this place stinks. Where am I anyway? The room began to quickly light up as fire began to spread rapidly across the floor. No way, I'm in an incinerator. I started scrambling across the trash, looking for a way out, but all the walls were completely solid. This isn't good. I tried using my hammer to break through the walls, but they were too strong. I wasn't even making a dent. The fire was closing in around me. I was running out of time fast. I realized I only had one option left. Looks like the only way out is up. I grabbed as much material as I could before the fire spread to it and began building a makeshift tower, climbing my way back up out of the pile. I was building as quick as I could, but when I looked down, I saw that the fire was spreading quickly, inching closer and closer up my rickety tower of trash. Come on, I'm almost there. With one last piece, I was able to make my tower just tall enough. I jumped out of the pit right as the flames engulfed my tower completely. All right. Time to pay that bowling alley employee a visit. On days 43 through 46, I made my way back to the counter where the bowling alley employee was standing with their back to me. Boo! Ah, who the, what the? You? How did you escape? Eh, I'd give your evil plan a four out of 10. A four? Why, you little? Completely enraged, the bowling alley employee swelled with fury and transformed into a monstrous new form. Die, you pests. The bowling alley employee charged, swinging at me with his tusks. They tore into me as he then bit me with his powerful jaws, dealing a lot of damage. I slammed him over the head with my mallet, knocking him away from me. Then I grabbed hold of my bowling bowling ball and began exploding him. He shook the brunt of the attack off. They shot a collection of fangs that snapped at me as they sprouted from the floor. Despite retaliating with my strongest attacks, nothing I did was able to take him down. Your pathetic powers won't hurt me. It would take something much more powerful. He was right. Glancing around the bowling alley, I noticed that the fire from the incinerator had spread to the bowling lane. I lined myself up with the flames on the bowling lane and waited for my chance. Soon, the employee came charging at me and I dodged out of the way at the last second, turning around and blasting him with my explosive bowling balls, knocking him into the flames. Oh, how did you trick me? Looks like a skill issue to me. With the bowling alley employee taken care of, I was free to claim the super glue I needed to get for Gangle. All right, time to go repair that mask. On days 47 through 50, I returned to Gangle, giving her the super glue she needed to fix her mask. This is perfect. Thank you. She quickly repaired and donned her comedy mask. Oh, that's right. I remember where the glitch is now. Come on, oh, follow me. I followed Gangle to another location where we found the next glitch waiting. All right, time to take this sucker down. I stepped forward, ready to put an end to it. But then out of nowhere, the world began to glitch out around me. What the? The ground began to transform into a dangerous obstacle course surrounded by lava. Oh, come on. This whole place is rigged. Oh, well, that's just great. I guess I'll need to platform my way over to that abstraction. I began jumping from platform to platform, carefully making my way across. Easy does it now. Gotta be careful. I was making good progress until the ground began shaking unexpectedly. Now what? As the shaking intensified, a giant lava monster rose out of the pool of lava around the platforms. You're not getting any farther than that. Without warning, it attacked me. On days 51 through 54, I was under attack by the powerful lava monster. He used a powerful boulder toss attack at me, which I barely managed to dodge by jumping off the platform before it was destroyed. Watch it, what's the big idea? That glitch is the source of my power. You nor anyone else shall touch it. Right as he finished speaking, he attacked again by sending a lava wave at me. The wave launched me into the air, but luckily I managed to land on another platform. I jumped around dodging more attacks before sending explosive bowling balls back at the monster. Is that all you're capable of, weakling? <laughs> Man, this guy is too tough. I need to destroy that glitch before he gets the best of me. I watched carefully, evading the lava monster's attacks as I made my way across the platforms and closer to the abstraction. Remain still and let me crush you like the bug you are. 
as the lava monster made another powerful attack. I dodged out of the way and managed to seal the glitch once and for all. No, my power! I suddenly gained five more hearts and new powers. Feeling the energy ripple through me, I turned my attention to the lava monster. Unleashing my new ice powers, I was able to easily destroy the weakened beast. No! As the monster died, the world around me began to turn back to normal. Taking in my surroundings, I saw a letter on the floor. I ran over and picked it up. If you're reading this, please help me. I'm hiding in the arcade. Signed, Zubal. Huh, looks like Zubal is stuck in this whole mess too. I better go help them. Without wasting another second, I took off making my way back to the tent. On days 55 to 58, I arrived at the arcade to find Zubal hiding like a little baby. Ugh, finally, you found my note. Never thought I'd be happy to see you. Believe me, I wish somebody else had found it. We better get out of here though. Suddenly, the room began to abstract. We both braced ourselves until the glitching finally stopped. You okay, Zubal? Oh my gosh. I realized Zubal lost all their body parts and all that was left was a head. Oh no, this is awful. Help me find my body. Uh, do we have to? I don't really have the time. Seriously? Come on, lend me a hand. <laughs> I see what you did there. All right, let's look around. The two of us quickly scrambled through the arcade, looking for body parts. However, as I was searching, one of the arcade cabinets sucked Zubal and I inside. Ah! Suddenly, we reappeared inside some kind of game world. Are we inside of a video game? Weird. Suddenly, Creeper Knights came out and attacked me. On days 59 to 62, I fought off the low-level enemies without the help of Zubal. The knights swung at me with their fists and spawned many knights that exploded into pixel-sized bits. Then I leapt into the sky and stomped tons of them flat at once. With my overpowering strength, I was able to take every last one of them down. I think we need to beat this game in order to escape. Let's try to find out the main goal. I guess it's worth a shot. To Together, we travel through the game world until a villager came running towards us. Mighty heroes, our village is under attack and we need your help. Huh, well, isn't this convenient? This sounds like a main mission. Take us there. I followed the villager to their home where I saw an abstracted dragon terrorizing everything in its wake. All right, Zubal, it's time to slay a dragon. I charged into battle without a second thought. On days 63 to 66, I was fighting the abstracted dragon dragon one on one they used their laser breath on me dealing tons of damage i struck at him with my mallet attacks when it roared horrific masses of withering tentacles burst from the ground draining my health and holding me in place for the dragon to pummel me it then hurled another beam at me exploding me and my surroundings for massive damage this guy is no joke what should i do i'll distract them so you can get a clean hit sounds like a horrible idea but okay, let's do it. Zubal hopped ahead into the village and got the dragon's attention while the beast was chasing them, soaring through the air over the rooftops. I hopped up on top of a tower and readied up a powerful attack. Come I landed a concentrated ice beam on the dragon, freezing through its scales and killing it once and for all. Yep, all me. You saved my village. Thank you, please. Take this. The villager handed me a magic wand, causing me to gain five hearts and new powers. The Dark King is just north of here. Defeat him and save the entire kingdom. I'll stay behind and help them rebuild. Hurry and beat this game. Rebuild with no hands? Um, okay, you got this. With that, I kept on moving along. On days 67 to 70, I arrived at the chambers of the Dark King, where he stood waiting for me. You must be the mighty hero that has come to stop my conquest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have time for this. Let me just kick your butt so I can get out of here. Why, you little... I charged the boss and used my hammer smash attack on him, but he endured it. Within a split second, he slashed me with his scythe. Blow after blow, it dealt tons of damage. The Dark King grew more upset, drawing even more power from within and allowing him to levitate and move faster. He wailed at me with immense force and I could barely keep up with him. So I used my jewel mallets to return the pain. Finally, I had the Dark King right where I wanted him. 
I launched one more powerful attack and ended him with my new power. I managed to defeat him, winning the game with ease. Suddenly, Zubal and I were zapped back into the arcade. Zubal now had their body back. Wow, that actually worked. Thanks, Jax. Before I was able to celebrate, Abstracted Kane appeared before the two of us. On day 71 to 74, I was confronted by Abstracted Kane. I finally found you again. You've been ruining all of my glitchy masterpieces. Come on, Kane. I know the real you is in there somewhere. This is the real me, and I'm going to make you two see that. He attacked Zubal with a powerful attack abstraction bomb, but I quickly jumped in front of them to block the hit. In an instant, I was teleported into a dungeon. Nothing but darkness surrounded me. What is this place? I need to get out of here. I started walking forward when out of nowhere, abstracted versions of myself began to gather all around me. I was surrounded. Join us. No, out of my way. Become one with the glitch. I used my mighty stomp to push the horde back as they swarmed around me. They were as strong as I was, but luckily, they lacked my powers. I fought my way through them, but their numbers were endless. I finally managed to spot a door and hurried towards it. On day 75 to 78, I walked through the door and shut it only to find myself in a strange room. Inside of it was the next glitch waiting for me. I better destroy this thing and get out of here. I began walk towards the abstraction, but the door to the dungeon burst open behind me. The room flooded with abstracted beings, and they all combined to transform into a giant abstracted monster. Why can't I just catch a break? It called down a swarm of stars that began to fall, exploding all around me. I used my punch attacks to keep him busy as I evaded the attacks. Once I had some range, I launched a barrage of bowling balls at him. He shot more abstraction bolts at me, and I retaliated, summoning a storm of sharp ice shards that rained down above him. He kept up a steady volley of shadow balls, which I barely managed to dodge. I attacked back with my chain whips. I'm gonna turn you to muck. It was anyone's game, but I wasn't about to let them win. I used my mighty mallet slam attack to overpower them, finally taking them down. Time to finish what I came here to do. I sealed the glitch, and I was teleported back inside of the tent. Only two more glitches to go. Just then, Kinger ran up to me in a frenzy. Jax, I have a lead on the next glitch. Come with me. For the days of 79 through 82, Kinger had led me to my next abstraction to go up against. Oh, looky here. One more found. Thanks, Kinger. I think I got it from here. Okay, good. Kinger then ran away as fast as he could. I mean, you could have continued helping. Ah, oh, whatever. I'll do it myself. I then walked up to the glitch to seal it, when out of nowhere, a group of illagers ran around me, trying to make sure I wouldn't seal the abstraction up. Stop right there. Get away from our glitch. Come on, guys. Just leave me alone with the glitchy thing, and no one has to get hurt. Oh, but we can't. And if anyone's gonna get hurt, it's you. Look, we don't have to play this game. All I need to do is destroy this thing. Then I'll be out of your way. This glitch is our god. You will never destroy it. Get him, men. All of the illagers started to attack me at once with their swords, magic, and bows. You were right about me getting hurt, but I'm gonna hurt you more. I tried to keep fighting, using my powers to get rid of a few of them and my explosive bowling ball to try and strike them down, but it just wasn't working. The army would continue to grow as we were battling. I can't keep up much longer. Keep attacking, man. I was becoming overwhelmed by the Illager army. I couldn't take it anymore, and I passed out. On days 83 to 86, I woke up in a cage with Kinger, and standing in front of me was the Illager leader. You nasty intruders will soon die by my hand. Wait, I'm also royalty, and by royal law, I challenge you to a king-off. What's that? Sounds stupid. Watch your tongue, rabbit. It is the most sacred of challenges amongst leaders. I accept. Suddenly, the floor opened up from under my feet, and we were both dropped into an arena. Standing below the Illager King in front of me was a powerful knight. Uh, can someone tell me what this challenge is? The King's Knights have a fight to the death, and the winner becomes the new king. I don't have a knight, so you'll just have to do. Good luck. In an instant, Kinger ran away. 
Hey, how do I keep getting in these kind of situations? Just then, the knight lunged at me. On days 87 to 90, I was locked in an epic battle between the Illager's knight. He used an enormous slam attack on me and tried to overwhelm me. It shook the ground as it landed. This guy's power levels were insane. I fought back with my dragon spear attack, then followed up with some explosive bowling balls. But thanks to his heavy armor, he was able to endure all my strikes. He zeroed in on me, swinging wildly and slamming the earth once again. Dirt rose and fell like waves on the ocean, sending me off balance and making it easier to hit me. For the king! He used his deadly axe attack on me, leaving me with low health. Luckily, I was able to heal up with some food. I quickly resumed fighting though, as the knight continued to strike at me relentlessly. This isn't good, I need to break through his armor. I used my mallet strike attacks to wear him down. And finally, when he was vulnerable with his axe stuck in the ground, I went in for the kill. Ah! I landed the finishing blow, winning the match in Kinger's name. I also gained five more hearts and new lightning powers. Looks like I'm the new king of the Illager, and my first decree is to destroy the glitch. I left the area to finish what I had started. On days 91 to 93, I arrived at the glitch and stepped toward it to seal it up. But suddenly, an abstracted Ravager emerged from it to stop me. Prepare to die. Not this again. The monster used its massive size to jump into the air, coming down with enough force to almost smash me flat. The ground quaked with its fury as it roared and charged me again, attempting to gore me with its tusks. I summoned my lightning powers. They rained down on the monster, but it shrugged it off. That won't stop me! Take this! I was determined to stop this glitched creature. I began to add other attacks onto my lightning. I threw bowling balls, snapping chains at him, and bashed him over the head with my twin mallets. I watched as he tried to charge at me again, but I dodged and he slammed into the tower wall. You just messed up big time. I landed the finishing blow, and as it died, the glitch sealed. Suddenly, the ground trembled and abstracted cane appeared before me. No! My beautiful glitches, you monster! He began attacking me, when out of nowhere, I heard a voice calling out to me. Jax, over here! Just like that, I escaped with Ragatha. On days 94 through 96, I followed Ragatha to a hiding spot near the tent where all my friends were waiting for me. You actually did it! There's only one glitch left to seal! Yeah, we're so close. Do you guys have any idea where it might be? I think I do. Here. Zubal handed me a map titled Kane's Fortress. While you were on your little quest with Kinger, I managed to find out where Kane's been hiding. Jotted down the location on that map. Bet the final glitch is inside there. Nice. I was always curious where he has been hiding this entire time. Take this to help you. Gangle handed me a potion of strength to help with the upcoming mission. Thanks, everyone. It's time to finally get this quest over with. Then we can all relax. Ready to take on anything? I departed and made my way towards the final quest. On days 97 through 98, I had followed the map closely and found myself outside of the giant chessboard. The chessboard? Nobody ever comes here anymore. Is this the right place? I took a closer look, and it was absolutely packed with guards on the inside. That's a lot of security. Looks like I'll have to sneak my way past it if I want to reach Kane in one piece. I began to make my way through the hideout, moving from cover to cover, avoiding the guards as I stealthed closer and closer. My progress was halted when I found myself stuck in front of a guard who wasn't moving at all and no other cover in sight. Oh great, I need to get past him somehow. I looked around for a solution and spotted a table with a glass bottle on it. Yeah, that gives me an idea. I took careful aim and rolled my bowling ball into the shelf, causing the glass bottle to fall off and shatter creating the perfect distraction. Hart, who goes there? Show yourself! I watched as the guard wandered off from his post to investigate, and then made my move to continue forward. I finally made it to another room, but to my surprise, it was completely empty. What the? Now, get him! A bunch of guards came swarming into the room. They had set a trap, and I fell right into it. On day 99, I was under attack by a group of Kane's guards. I leapt in with my 
powerful mallet. I smashed my weapons against the mass of abstracted bodies, and many of the glitches fell, unable to withstand my might. The glitches clustered up in a way that became easy to hit with my lightning and chain attacks. I kept fighting on, determined to make my way through every last guard if I had to, when I heard a voice suddenly call out to me. Stop! Leave him alone! I turned around to watch as my friends came charging in and began fighting off the endless guards for me. We've got this. You go ahead and see that final glitch. You guys aren't too bad. Thanks! With my friends to back me up, I was able to break away from the fight and started making my way deeper into the hideout, determined to destroy the final glitch. On day 100, I arrived in the final room, where the abstracted Kane was waiting, guarding the final glitch. All right, Kane, it's over. Hand over the glitch. Never! It's the last and only one of my beautiful glitches remaining. Your mindless destruction ends here. Kane attacked me with a combination of magic and abstracted power. He shot me with dart-like magic arrows that threatened to run me through. I dodged the brunt of the attack, but then he began to pelt me with blobs of pure abstracted energy. As he flew closer to the ground, I summoned my chain whip to lash at him. Seeing another opportunity to strike, I shot out my lightning, sending electricity coursing through his body. It'll take more than that to stop me, Kane. Angered, Kane entered the next phase to his attack. With a swipe of his sight, he shot enormous spheres of darkness. With another swipe, he leveled orbs of violet shadows. It was like dodgeball, as I ducked and weaved, doing my best to dodge while still hitting back with my mallets. Intent to put a stop to my nimbleness, Kane called forth masses of glitch tentacles that latched onto me, holding me in place while he pummeled me. Not about to let this slide, I retaliated with my own attack. I'm just getting started! Take this! Kane blasted me with his ultimate black void attack, causing significant damage and leaving me on the ropes. No! I didn't come this far to fail now. I'm not giving up yet. As soon as I chugged the potion of strength I had been given, I unleashed all my powers at once to overwhelm Kane until I finally had an opening. I charged toward the final glitch, sealing it, which caused Kane to return back to normal. I was victorious. Suddenly, the world around me began to glitch out as if a dark being was stirring deep within me. My vision blurred and I was transported into my next form. On day one, I spawned in as Kofmo, surrounded by the other members of the digital circus. Unfortunately, I was in the middle of abstracting from a mental breakdown. I'll never leave. I can never leave. I abstracted into a giant, terrifying monster. Everyone panicked as I went on a rampage, attacking my friends. Kill, kill, kill! Kane was the only one who dared confront me. I'll help you, buddy! Kane cast a magic spell on me, separating me from the abstraction. But it wasn't over yet, as my abstraction energy morphed into an enormous titan. Mark my words, Kofmo. You and I will merge together once more. You can never escape me! Without warning, he sent out a giant laser right past me. Kane, what are we going to do? Obviously, there's only one thing we can do. Run! On day two, I was on the run, trying to escape from the giant abstracted titan. I was winding the gap when out of nowhere, glitchy portals tore open around me. Terrifying abstracted monsters poured out from the portals and began to pursue me. Leave me alone! I tried to escape the entities on foot, but no matter where I went, a new portal would appear and block my path. I was quickly surrounded. I had run out of options, so I tried to take them head on instead. The monsters attacked me with their abstracted powers, but I had nothing but my fist to defend myself. Things were looking bad. I need to find a way to get out of here. I looked for a way out of the situation and noticed the glitchy portals still open nearby, giving me a risky idea. Here goes nothing! I jumped into one of the portals, unsure of what would happen to me. On day three, I appeared inside of a glitchy area where darkness surrounded me. Floating in my path was a strange artifact. What's this? Take it. It will make us stronger. 
By instinct, I reached out and grabbed the artifact, causing its dark powers to take control of me. I transformed into a terrifying form, a dark tentacle wrapped around my arm, and I gained rows of sharp teeth. I now had five more hearts and gained the power of abstraction. Suddenly, I was transported back to the circus, but something was off. I didn't feel like myself anymore. Just then, Ragatha found me and ran over to me. Cosmo, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. I I don't want to. Do it. The mysterious voice took complete control over my body and made me attack Ragatha with my new abstraction blast attack. She ran for her life, but my body forced me to chase after her. Please, I want to control my body. to the abstraction now. As I ran, I noticed a lever on the ground and managed to gain enough self-control to pull it. A trap door opened under my feet and I fell into the darkness below. On days four and five, I landed inside of an old unused bumper car room. I had managed to protect Ragatha for now. Suddenly, a swarm of abstracted rats scuttered towards me. My abstracted energy had lured the creatures out of hiding. Get away from me! The rats had colonized down here and used rudimentary cross but I just continued to frenzy, killing the rodents left and right with my immense power. They didn't stand a chance against me, and I began to lose myself to the voice in my head. I will kill everyone here! Just then, a little abstracted gnome ran into my view. Hey, over here! Nobody will escape me! I chased the gnome through the room. Eventually, we reached a door where the gnome ran through, and I followed after them. On days six through seven, I arrived at the other side of the door to find myself inside of the void. All right, buddy, let's get you in control again. The abstracted gnome used their powers to summon a shrine with six podiums. I tried to lunge at the gnome again, but they dodged and landed an attack on me instead. The blow caused me to drop my abstracted artifact. Give it back! I ran towards the artifact, but the gnome snatched it first and placed it into the shrine. Suddenly, there was a flash of light and I regained full control of my body. What happened? You found one of the six abstracted artifacts. They give you great power, but also make you go insane. Luckily, placing them on this shrine allows you to control them. Whoa, if that's the case, I could use their power to defeat the abstracted titan. Just then, I heard the sound of a familiar scream. Ah! I think that's Ragatha. I have to help her. I ran toward the source of the yelling and discovered it was coming from behind a door. I rushed through it to save my friend. On days eight through nine, I arrived at the other side of the door. But instead of Ragatha, I found a molten knight waiting for me. <laughs> You fell for my little trick. Suddenly, a cage appeared around me. I had fallen right into a trap. No, let me go. I hope you're ready to be handed over to the abstracted titan. I used my abstraction blast to try and break free from the prison, but it was no use. Just as I thought I was done for, Pomni ambushed the Molten Knight holding me captive. Leave him alone. The Molten Knight launched itself forward, blazing sword coming down to slash at her. As the blade arced through the air, it left trails of fire in its wake, and Pomni did her best to dodge out of the way of the brutal attacks. The monster monster roared and in a blaze jetpacked straight at her. Thinking fast, she used her beam attack, stunning the Molten Knight and then freed me from the cage. Get back in your veins! Run! The two of us ran for our lives as the angry Molten Knight chased close behind us. On days 10 through 12, Pomni and I were on the run from the Molten Knight. It was gaining on us fast and we were going to be caught. Luckily, Pomni managed to find a strange passageway Way. Cosmo, through here, hurry! The two of us ran inside, but were immediately met with a hole in the ground. We fell deep into the passage and landed in a weird room. Behind us was none other than Zubal's head. Oh boy, now you've done it. You just walked into the mouth of the Gloink Queen. Soon we'll all be turned into Gloinks. The room trembled as we were about to be digested. We weren't in a weird room at all, but the Gloink Queen's stomach. 
We need to get out of here before it's too late. Suddenly, something dropped down from above us. I got a closer look and realized it was the next abstracted artifact. The Goink Queen must have eaten this. Pomni, Zubal, brace yourselves. I grabbed a hold of the artifact and its dark power surged through me. On days 13 through 15, I was overwhelmed with abstracted energy, causing me to unlock my abstracted third eye. Unfortunately, just like before, the mysterious voice returned. The body once again belongs to me. I lost control of my power and began to rampage inside of the Gloink Queen's stomach. I used my new abilities to send out Confuse Rays and summon spinning abstraction blades until the Queen spat me and my friends out. Ugh, gross! What foul creatures did I eat? Out of my way! Blinded by the abstracted power, I began to attack the Gloink Queen with my abstraction blasts, dealing massive damage. The Gloink Queen had no choice but to defend herself. She began to return the attacks wildly, stomping and using her sonic booms to try and fight out of the situation. I was merciless though. I fired off Starburst ray after ray, then pelted her with massive void explosions. The Gloink Queen continued to take more and more damage, and soon she had a enough. Ugh, get away from me. She tried to run away, but I chased after her. I caught up and landed the finishing blow before turning toward my friends. Uh, are, are you okay, Kofmo? I must abstract everything. The abstracted powers had completely consumed me. Unable to stop myself, I attacked Zubal and Pomni. On days 16 to 18, I was attacking my friends. No! Get away from them! Pomni tried to defend Zubal from me. She sent out musical attacks to slow me down, but I easily overpowered her, forcing her to run. Get back here! I chased her as she darted through a nearby exit door. As I ran in, I found myself in a series of office rooms. I followed Pomni as she tried to escape, chasing her through door after door, unable to control my dark powers. Suddenly, I trembled into nothingness. One of the doors led us straight into the void. Leave my friend alone, you evil artifact! She hit me with her golden melody attack, causing me to drop the second artifact. Pomni rapidly picked it up and took it to the shrine in the void, where it caused another flash of light. Suddenly, I was able to regain control of my body. Oh no, it happened again. I'm so sorry, Pomni. No, don't be sorry. I'm just glad you're okay. Abruptly, a portal tore open behind me and sucked me inside. On days 19 to 22, I arrived in the middle of a bowling alley as a bowling ball rolled directly at me. Whoa, hey, out of the way. Ah! I knocked the ball out of the way, throwing off the trajectory of it and making Jax miss his shot. Oh. Now you've done it. Just then, some golem thugs walked up to Jax. Well, Jax, looks like you lost your bet. It's time that you paid up. Uh, no can do, fellas. I'm a little short on cash right now, you see. <laughs> I'm sure we can work something out. Hmm. No, I don't think we can. Get him, boys! The golem lackeys jumped Jax, laying into him. Ow, ow, hey, watch the mitts. Hey, leave him alone! I tried to fight the lackeys off with my powers, but they were stronger than me, being made of solid steel. In moments, we were both overpowered and captured. Well, this isn't anything like my episode. You just had to ruin my shot, didn't you, Kofmo? Oh, uh, sorry about that. Hey, quit yammering. The next thing I knew, we were dragged off, unsure of what my fate would be. On days 23 to 26, we were taken to the golem's boss and thrown in front of him. Please, is there a way we can settle this peacefully? Tell you what, pal. Find my lost pet, Pickles, and we'll call it even. He's just defenseless, so a smart guy like you can understand why I'm worried. You've got yourself a deal. The goons took Jax and I to the area Pickles was last seen and dropped us off to go searching. We began to set up traps, baiting them with Pickles' favorite food. Uh, why do I get stuck doing stuff like this? Don't worry, I've got a good feeling about this. The two of us took cover and waited. After a moment, the ground began to shake. Yes, we got him! 
we ran out from our hiding spot. But instead of a cute, defenseless pet, a huge monster stood where the bait was. I've got a gut feeling that's Pickles. No way! Pickles? At hearing its name, the monster turned around and spotted us. Pickles attacked both Jax and I angrily. He then landed a hit on me, leaving me with low health. I was forced to run for cover. As I ran, I stumbled across a mysterious cave and quickly hid inside. On days 27 to 30, I headed deeper into the cave and discovered the next abstracted artifact waiting for me. Oh no, I can't grab it without losing control again. Suddenly, I heard Jax yelling for me. He was in trouble. Ah, that's kind of rude. Quit jumping. Help! I don't have a choice. I have to save Jax. Quickly, I grabbed the artifact and absorbed the glitch, transforming into my third phase. I gained five more hearts and new powers as I began my next frenzy. I rampaged out of the cave and attacked the biggest thing in sight, Pickles. The worm tried to fight back, but with my new dark powers, I was much stronger than before. My confused ray and their laser beam met each other head on, putting our power to the test. In my upgrade form, I was able to focus my energy and overtake the stalemate. Recoiling, Pickles was pushed back and unleashed a barrage of cosmic shots at me. I summoned dark tentacles that ripped out of the ground and lashed away at Pickles, taking them by surprise. And soon, I managed to kill him. Ah, sweet. I didn't know you could pull that off, Gothmo, bud. Must abstract everything! I turned on Jax next, my mind completely lost to the abstraction. On days 31 to 34, I was attacking Jax after having lost my reasoning to the abstracted powers. Well there, buddy. I know I broke into your room a few times, but this is a bit of an overreaction, don't you think? Jax tried to fight me off, but I was too powerful. It wasn't long before Jax was cornered, and on his last leg, right before I put him down for good, Kane showed up. Enough of that! You're coming with me, you naughty clown! Kane teleported us both away, saving Jax from my rampage. When we reappeared, we were in the void. Just do this real quick! With a magical swish, Kane yanked the artifact out of my inventory. Snatching it up, he placed it on the shrine, and I regained control of my body. There, that should do the trick! Kane, thanks for saving me! Don't thank me! You're in trouble! You've been messing with the abstracted artifacts! Those things are dangerous, and I forbid you from using them anymore! But how else are we going to stop the abstracted titan? That's right! How else will you stop me? Suddenly, the void shook, and the abstracted titan appeared before us! I can't have you interfering with my plans. You're coming with me, Kane. He tore open a portal that dragged Kane inside before vanishing himself with a giant roar. Hey, let my friend go. I jumped into the portal after them right before it too vanished. On days 35 to 38, I appeared on the other side of the portal, inside of a carnival. I have to figure out where the abstracted titan took Kane. I walked around the carnival, but they were nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, I spotted Ragatha seated in a dunk tank above the boiling lava. Giant gingerbread men were lined up, taking their turns at throwing balls at the target to get Ragatha to fall in. I watched as one of them threw their shot and missed. Dread, I missed again. No, stop it! Don't you see the lava below me? That's the point, Patches. We want to see you burn. They all laughed at my friend's impending doom. Oh, you're all horrible. She's in trouble. I need to stop them. I ran in to try and fight off the gingerbread men. Gothmo, you've got to get me out of here. Hey, you're ruining our game. Get lost. The gingerbread men attacked me, causing me to get pushed back onto the target. Suddenly, the ground opened beneath Ragatha, and she fell towards the lava. No! On days 39 to 42, before Ragatha was burnt to death, I used my tentacles to smash the tank, causing the lava to seep out. Ragatha quickly jumped through the opening and ran to the nearby water at the ring toss. Ah, much better. 
You ruined everything! You're gonna pay! How did I ruin everything? This is madness! Do you realize what you're doing? Doesn't matter what we were doing! It's none of your business! The gingerbread men began to attack me with their powerful candy attacks! I fought back! It was abstraction versus sweets! Not wasting a moment, I whipped out my sharp, corrupted blades! They spun around me, protectively, slicing right through the cookie bodies of the gingerbread men! No one's getting cavities on my watch! The gingerbread men blasted me with sweet sugar bursts, then followed up by pelting me with leftover baseballs. I slammed down on the ground as I summoned my void tentacles, which sprang up and tore at the gingerbread men. I had gotten much stronger, and finally, I was able to take them all down. Ragatha, are you okay? Sorry for attacking you before. I am, since you saved me. Thank you. Please, take this. She handed me a splash potion of levitation. I'm looking for the abstracted titan. Have you seen him? No, but maybe you could spot him from the Ferris wheel? Then I know where to go next. On days 43 to 46, I arrived at the Ferris wheel, where nobody seemed to be around. Time to see if I could find the abstracted titan. I climbed to the peak of the Ferris wheel and saw that part of the grounds had a trail of abstracted blocks in it. That must be where they went. With my new lead, I went into the direction of the glitched grounds. As I traveled, I saw Kinger being chased by raptors. Help! Leave him alone! I jumped in to fight the raptors. Oh, thank goodness, Kofmo. You have come to my rescue. Don't worry. Working together, we can beat these guys in no time. Oh, I don't fight. That's not a king's job. They bit and slashed at every part of me, and I fought them back with my abstracted powers. But they were so numerous, I was getting overwhelmed. Get off of me! I threw the splash potion of levitation, sending all of the enemies flying. Unfortunately, I also accidentally hit Kinger too. Oh no, I have to get them down! On days 47 to 50, Kinger was flying in the sky, along with the raptors. Help! I'm scared of heights! Don't worry, I'll save you! I quickly dug a hole under Kinger, and to my luck, I struck water! Can you hurry? I feel like they're floating closer to me! Float yourself over the water! The potion wore off, and he fell, landing in the water, saving him from fall damage! The raptors hit the ground and died! Oh my gosh! Thank you, Kofmo! You destroyed them and even kept your mind intact! I'm very surprised! Well, you know I've been working to keep a rain on the abstraction! Seems like you're doing a good job then. Keep it up. No problem, but I don't have any more time to waste. I need to save Kane. I continued down the glitchy path alone. Finally, I found Kane, but he was captured inside of a cage. Sitting next to him was the next abstracted artifact. Kane, let me get you out of there. Wait, it's a trap. Suddenly, the abstracted Titan leapt off the top of the fortress, slamming down right in front of me. Looks like you finally caught up, my other half. Other half? What are you talking about? I am you, Kofmo. Born from the abstraction within you. And once we are reunited, we will take over all of the circus. Enough of your monologue. Let Kane go, or I'll end you here and now. Please, you don't scare me. I am the power you cast aside, and with it, I'll make you give in to the darkness. Without another moment, the abstracted titan lunged at me. On days 51 to 54, I was being attacked by the abstracted titan. He used his powerful slashes, destroying the structure around us, as well as releasing powerful roars that collided painfully into me. I fought back with my abstraction attacks with little effect. He was the strongest enemy I have ever faced thus far, but I was determined to destroy it. The abstracted titan unleashed his ultimate attack, leaving me with extremely low health. If I took another hit, I'd be a goner. Go on, Kofmo. Take the abstracted artifact or die. Don't do it. The darkness will consume you. I don't have a choice. The Titan readied up his next attack, so I ran for the artifact and reached it just in time. I gained five more hearts, as well as new abstraction powers. However, I lost control of myself, like the other abstractions before. Yes. 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 I began to attack wildly all around me. 
Time for the real fun to begin. To test me, the Titan blasted open Kane's cage, freeing him. Go on, Kofmo. Kill the foolish ringmaster. He vanished as I turned my sights on Kane. Unable to control myself, I attacked him with my new powers. Sorry, Kofmo. This is for your own good. Kane gathered up his magical powers so that he could transform into a much stronger version of himself. In my rage, I tried to fight Kane, but he unleashed powerful magic, knocking me out. On days 55 through 58, I found myself standing in a strange dreamlike world. Where am I? You are inside of your own mind. Out of the darkness, an abstracted being suddenly appeared in front of me. Wait, you're the voice that has been taking over my body. That's right. I am a part of you. You're an abstracted monster. That's not right. I'm just a fun-loving clown. Have you looked in the mirror lately? You have been perfected by the abstraction. No longer just a clown. I'll never give in to the abstraction or the titan. Doesn't matter. Now that you're here, I'm finally taking complete control of you. The abstracted monster lunged forward to attack me. I tried to fight, but soon discovered I couldn't use any of my abstracted powers. The monster of my mind began to unleash the powers I thought were my own. I desperately tried to fight back, but couldn't withstand his onslaught. Without my powers, I was too weak to do any real damage to him. And before I knew it, I was backed into a corner. The abstracted monster closed in, ready to deal the killing blow, when I suddenly woke up. I took in my surroundings, realizing I was in the void, and the artifact I picked up was on the shrine. Kane had saved me just in time. Thanks, Kane. That was a close one. I was almost taken by the darkness. And that's why you can't use those abstracted artifacts anymore. They're too dangerous. But then how am I going to defeat the abstracted titan? Here, take this map and find the treasure of the circus. With this, you can gain more power without being put at risk. Thanks, Kane. I won't let you down. I took the map and began following the path towards the treasure. On days 59 through 62, I arrived at the location on the map, a giant carousel. Huh, the treasure of the circus must be somewhere on this ride. I began to investigate the carousel, but couldn't find anything out of the ordinary. Giving up, I turned to search somewhere else and saw a chest sitting on the ground. Oh, there it is. I wonder how I missed that. I hustled over to open up the chest and retrieved the treasure, but as I I reached out, the chest revealed itself to be a mimic. Intruder! Everyone get him! Hurry! As the mimic yelled, the mounts of the carousel sprang to life, jumping off of their stations and coming to attack me. Using my abstracted powers to fight the creatures off, I managed to take a few down, but they quickly came back to life and rejoined the fight. Yes, that's it. Rise up again, my friends. Kill that clown. That's it. The mimic is reviving the creatures. Well, no use wasting my time on those small Small fries, I need to stop him! I took careful aim at the Mimic and used my abstraction blast, landing an unexpected blow and defeating the Mimic. As the Mimic died, all of the other animals from the carousel fell with it. I looked around to ensure no one remained and spotted a new path through the carousel. That's it, one step closer towards the treasure of the circus. Putting the battle behind me, I set off through the new path, eager to find my prize. On days 63 through 66, I was making my way through the new path, finding the treasure of the circus is waiting for me at the end of the passage. At last, there it is. As I made my way over to claim the treasure, a group of gloinks appeared and snatched the artifact away before I could get to it. Hey, I need that. No way. You killed our queen. You took her from us, so we're taking this treasure from you. The gloinks took off, running away down the passageway. I chased after them as quickly as I could. As I made my way out of the carousel, I realized I wasn't going to be able to catch up to them. I stopped and took steady aim, preparing to use my confuse ray to try and slow the thieves down. But before I could hit them with my power, an abstracted rat from earlier appeared, killing the gloinks in a single blow. I'll be taking that. The little monster grabbed the treasure and transformed, becoming gigantic and 
more powerful in its new form. I ran in, but it was too late. Empowered by the treasure, it unleashed its abstracted magic into the ground, causing the world around it to corrupt, crumbling away into a hazardous, glitchy wasteland. Oh no, this isn't good. I need to get out of here. On days 67 through 70, I was trying to make my way safely out of the glitchy wasteland, jumping from platform to platform. Run while you can. You will never escape my wasteland. I ignored them and continued on. I was making great progress until I got to an extremely wide jump. There's no way out. Here goes nothing. I took a running leap, but I didn't make it and fell into the glitch goo. I felt the glitch goo seeping into me, poisoning as it worked its way through my body. This isn't good. I need to get out of here fast. I tried to swim towards a ledge, but an abstracted manta ray came out of the glitchy goo, pushing me back under. Join us, Coughmouth! I was getting pulled down deeper into the goo. I was running out of air, and the poison was damaging my health quickly. Stop! Let me go! Desperate to escape, I used my powers to knock the creature off of me and swam urgently towards the surface. I was almost out of air, and I still hadn't made it. I'm... I'm not going to make it! On days 71 through 74, I thought I was going to drown in the glitch goo when Gangle suddenly pulled me out to safety. Oh, oh, are you okay? Thanks, Gangle. That was a close one. You're welcome. Are you hurt? Yeah, I'm okay now, but I lost the treasure and I'm extremely low on health. Here, take this food. Gangle then gave me some steak to help me heal up. What is this place and what's the treasure? This is some strange place made by an abstracted rat monster. And the treasure of the circus is an important item that I lost. It was supposed to help me power up. Then we'll have to get it back. Come with me. I followed Gangle, finding where the now giant abstracted rat was dwelling. It seemed to be guarding a chest, which probably held the treasure. It must be in there. We have to get him away from that chest. Mm, oh, I have an idea. I watched as she sneaked away, placing a gift box on the ground as bait and circling back around towards the hiding spot. Moments later, the abstracted beast turned and saw the gift laying on the ground. What's this? A gift for me? I watched as the abstracted beast ran over excitedly towards the gift while making my own way towards the now unguarded chest. I snuck over quickly and threw the chest open, finding the treasure. Unfortunately, all the power had been completely drained from it. Oh no, this is bad. Hearing me, the monster turned and saw I was standing in front of the chest, clutching the powerless treasure. Well, well, look what we've got here, you troublemakers. The monster lunged towards us, but Gangle and I were able to dodge his attack. Run! For the days of 75 to 78, I was being chased through this wasteland by the abstracted rat monster. Soon I found myself cornered at an area full of abstracted goo. This is gross. Nowhere to run now. The monster then attacked me, so I had no choice but to fight back. At first, I thought I had the fight in the back, but the monster began blasting me with golden powers. Upon absorbing the treasure of the circus, he also gained powerful golden attacks. He blasted me with rays of light, then summoned beams of pure sun power radiating from the sky. His powers were super strong, and I did my best to return the attacks, using my tentacle attacks and abstracted slashes to my advantage. After some battling, I noticed the next abstracted artifact was not far from where we were fighting. No, it's too dangerous. I have to win without it. I had to do some quick thinking if I wanted to get that artifact and survive this fight. I got it. Take this. I attacked the giant abstracted rat with my confused ray power, making them stumble into the abstracted goo. What? Oh, I'm stuck. He then sunk into it like quicksand until he was finally gone. Oh, Moo, you did it. We were about to celebrate, but something unexpected happened. No way for that! The abstracted rat was emerging from the goo, grabbing Gangle as he was trying to escape. This pulled her into the goo with him, and they started to sink again. Gangle, no! It was days 79 to 82, and my plan had backfired. Now Gangle was in danger too. If I don't save her now, she's gonna die. Embrace the darkness, Gothmo. Use the artifact's power. 
I was reluctant, but I knew I had to save Gangle no matter what. So I ran for the artifact. Here goes nothing. I grabbed the artifact and in doing so, I gained five more hearts and new potent abstracted poison powers. With the upgrade, I would be able to resist the goo and would be able to save Gangle for sure. Let my friend go. I then jumped into the goo with the monster, attacking it with my newfound strength. This caused him to let go of Gangle. No! I then used my new powers to overwhelm the beast, killing him, finally letting us get out of the goo. Yes, I won! Gangle, you're safe! Safe, but not sound. Wait, what's happening? Unfortunately, the darkness started to take over. <laughs> Your body will be mine! I couldn't control myself. I leapt forward and started to attack Gangle. Not safe! Not safe! Luckily, Gangle was able to think quickly and trap me using her ribbon, tying me up. Oh, we need to get you to the void before it's too late. For days 83 to 86, Gangle took me to the void, where she was able to place the next artifact at the altar before I could lose myself and go out of control. I once more surpassed my abstracted side a bit longer, and Gangle freed me from the ribbons. We have to find the last artifact. There isn't much time. You said it, buddy. Just then, Kane had arrived. Cosmo, I told you not to get any more of the abstracted artifacts. I'll have to lock you up for this. Oh, wait, no. Kane zapped me into a cage, trying to protect me and everyone else. Stop, this is a big misunderstanding. I don't have time to talk to abstracted beings. It's off to the cellar for you. Kane, wait. He had no choice but to get the artifact to save me. But what about the treasure of the circus? Gangle then handed Kane the drained artifact, and that's when Kane realized it was now useless. I see. So it was an emergency. Sorry. He then made the cage disappear, freeing me. Since the treasure of the circus has no more power, the only other option now is to obtain the final abstracted artifact. It's dangerous, so I'll come with you. Thanks, Kane. We'll overcome this no matter what. We then all left the void together with a wave of Kane's baton. Kane and I then reappeared at the abandoned village for the days of 87 through 90. This is a place where abstracted entities like to gather. You should be able to find the final artifact here. Then let's start looking. We then started to explore the village, checking every nook and cranny we could. But soon in our search, I spotted an abstracted trail. <laughs> The voice, it must be leading me to the artifact. I continued towards the path, and as I did, I accidentally left Kane behind in the process. Gothmo, where'd you go? Gothmo! Soon, I made it to the end of the trail, where I found nothing but an empty clearing. That's weird. I could have sworn I was onto something. Out of nowhere, another abstracted monster jumped down on top of me. Ow! I'm taking you to the abstracted titan. On days 91 through 93, I was locked in a fight against the entity that had ambushed me. They used their strong punches and even stronger headbutts to hurt me. Their abstracted energy lingered, causing delayed explosions after each blow. I fought back using my abstracted poison powers. During our heated battle, the monster dodged away from my attack at the last moment, and I accidentally hit a hill, causing it to crumble. On the other side, I saw the final artifact. No way, there it is. I made a break for it and ran toward the artifact. As soon as I touched it, I gained 10 hearts and the ultimate abstraction black hole power. All right, time for round two. I unleashed my new attacks on the abstracted monster, overpowering him and winning the battle. <laughs> the darkness within you has reached an all time high. As the mysterious voice echoed in my head, I began to feel myself losing control. Suddenly, Kane appeared next to me. Oh no you don't, you dark fiend. With the wave of his staff, he teleported us both away. On days 94 through 96, Kane had teleported us away, causing us to reappear in the void. The shrine was waiting for me, but as I rushed towards it, to my horror, the abstracted titan appeared in front of me. You fools, you fell for my trap, and now I will crush your last little bit of hope. Before I could react, the monster turned toward the shrine and destroyed it. The structure crumbled away, as if all of my efforts meant nothing, leaving me unable to 
to control the power inside of me. Welcome to my army, Kofmo. <laughs> As the abstracted titan started to leave, I was unable to control myself. I turned towards Kane. Kane, I'm sorry. I can't control myself. I tried to fight it, but the darkness was too powerful, and I started shooting black holes and abstracted powers around Kane. He attempted to dodge as best as he could, unleashing a blast of fire as he charged towards me, but I used my confuse ray to befuddle him as I drew back. Kane called forth his void chains, ripping through the ground as I was lashing out, trying to strike Kane back. Tafmo, I know you're in there. You're stronger than the darkness is. You have to fight it. It's too late, Kane. I've become one with the abstraction. Then as your friend, I will end you. I dashed forward, closing the distance, using my dark abstracted blades to viciously slice away at Kane, retaliating desperately. He called down a series of lightning strikes, blasting me with powerful elemental damage. It wasn't any use though. I was far too powerful now and summoned void tentacles to hold him in place as I blasted him with abstraction bolts. Once Kane finally broke free, he blasted me with meteors, circling around and trying to dodge my attacks. He was growing weary from the battle, falling back on his telekinesis powers to try and stop me. As the fight was ending, Kane suddenly reverted to his original form, weakened from the fight. Kofmo, please! You have to resist it! I know you're still in there! Focusing hard on Kane's words, I was able to regain brief control over my body. Ugh, you're right! I have to overcome this! Thinking quickly, I managed to knock myself out before I hurt anyone else. On days 97 and 98, I found myself inside of my dream realm, where the mysterious entity was waiting for me. Oh, how good it is to see you again, my dear friend. Don't worry, it's just you and me this time. Kane won't be here to wake you up. That doesn't matter. I'm strong enough now to defeat you and control this power. <laughs> Everyone thinks as you do. They think you have enough willpower to resist. But I am you, the real you. And soon enough, you will see things my way. Maybe you're right. Maybe this is all hopeless. But I know I never wanted to hurt my friends. So I know you are not me. I will defeat you. Oh, is that so? The monster lunged at me, and I braced myself for the attack. Startled, I was barely able to dodge out of the way as it shot abstraction blasts at me. I shot a confuse ray at them, but to my surprise, I was hit with a confuse ray too. I heard void blasts exploding around me, and I unleashed my own barrage as well. Quickly, I realized that we had the same powers. Every time I used my powers, it would match the same attack, trading the same blow for blow. We traded abstracted blade slashes to no avail. It was beginning to feel hopeless. As we continued to clash, the thought of all my friends powered me, and I began to overwhelm the monster, finally gaining an edge they didn't have. Oh, how can this be? We have the same powers. Looks like I'm the stronger host after all. With a final mighty blow, I finished him off and then found myself waking back up in the real world. I looked around, taking in my surroundings and saw that I was surrounded by all of my allies ready for battle. You did it, Kofmo! You beat your inner darkness! That's right, and with nothing holding me back, it's time to defeat the abstracted Titan once and for all. And we're ready to fight by your side. That's right, I've been hitting the gym. There's a gym here? All right, guys, let's do this! On day 99, Kane took me and my allies to an abstracted area of the circus, where a massive castle was standing before me. The abstracted titan is here. You're the only one who can defeat him now. Are you sure? Me? What happened to the team effort? Trust me, I know things you don't. You're our only hope. Then we better get moving before his abstraction spreads any further. We walked towards the entrance when a swarm of abstractions blocked our path. Protect the titan. Everyone, prepare for battle. My 
my allies and I clashed with the army of abstracted freaks. Although we were outnumbered, my allies were powerful and kept the minions at bay, using all of their different types of powers. Kane with his magic and Pomni with their bard powers. Soon, we were overwhelming the army. We can't let the Titan escape. Go ahead without us. You've got it. I ran into the castle while my friends held off the guards. On day 100, I had finally arrived in the throne room where the abstracted Titan was waiting for me. Well, well, well. If it isn't Kofmo the Clown. Enough! Your plan failed. Surrender, and this won't be harder than it has to be. You may have managed to overcome the darkness, but I've since become the ultimate entity after splitting from you. Your powers only match a fraction of mine. Prepare to be punished. Enraged, the abstracted Titan charged forward, lashing out to attack me. He used his powerful beam attack, trying to end me in one hit, but I managed to dodge and strike back. I fought with my abstraction blasts, narrowly missing his beam attack as it ripped past me. Out of nowhere, the Titan reared back and came crashing down with a powerful Titan slam attack, destroying his own throne room in an attempt to crush me. He came at me, swinging his massive claws as I dodged, so I locked him in place with my black hole attack. We were neck and neck, almost matched equally in power. Trying to buy myself some time, I hit the Titan with a barrage of confuse rays, but the effect didn't last long. The Titan let loose with an ear-shattering roar as I tried to find more cover, but I fought back unleashing a combo of abstraction slashes and void explosions in an effort to turn the tides. Behold, the ultimate power of darkness. He used his ultimate attack once more when I had nowhere to run. I took the full brunt of the attack, putting me on the ropes. For the circus and for my friends. I charged up my own beam, blasting into my foe and killing the abstracted Titan. The circus was saved at last. Yes, I won. Ha! Ah!